Goodbye, Zeus. What's on the loose? Watch him fly, oh. He gotta go stop the schmo who made him die, oh. Look a chance, wet his pants, then he'd lie, oh. Son of the gods, Jason took the odds on the Argo. Jason, try and just catch her eye and stay humble. Take the risk when you toss the disc or take a tumble. Take a stand in his hand, load your cargo. Find the fleece and you might find peace on the Argo. So long, Herc. Can't find the jerk, Talo stepped on. Jason found the Achilles heel that he schlepped on. Stay alive, Hera helps times five, no exception. That son of a bee hopes you don't see his deception. Jason, try and just squeeze by while rocks crumble. Cause you had no shoe, Pelias knew you're ready to rumble. Pulled his sash, rocks would clash, watch that spar go. If he's on crack, you might get back on the Argo. Goodbye, Cliffs, escapes a gift from Poseidon. And the pleasant company that he's providing. Iron Man. Lends a hand, but he crunches. Harpy's blue when Doctor Who got the munchies. Jason tried to survive all this terror. Hope exists with assists from Sweet Hera. Those with greed didn't heed the gods' embargo. Out of whack, didn't make it back on the Argo. Find the fleas or the pain won't cease on the Argo. Son of the gods, you can beat the odds on the Argo. Yahoo! Yahoo! Oh, I'm awake now. There you go. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Black Dog 156. Yeah, is that right, Jim? Are Jim? We? It is. It is. Ah, there we go. Yes, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, this, uh, I'm Lee. I'm Darren. And Jim's Hello. over there. Go I'm on. over here. Yeah, there you go. It was almost as slick as in- intro as we could possibly come up with. <laughs> I'm Lee. I'm Darren. I'm I'm over here. <laughs> there you go. Well done. <laughs> yes. Um, and this week we shall be um, having a bit of news, bit of chat. Um, I've been in, uh, informed that there is more than one one sentence review sitting in the inbox now. Oh, we've got we've got a few. I've got a few bullets in the uh, in the chamber now, so I can God. pick and choose. Right? Okay. Okay. So, um, yeah, just pick something I hate. It makes it easier for me. Uh, let, let's see what we. No, uh, don't I'm, don't I'm start. Have a don't, quick look on the no, roster. No, stop I'm it. Just going to mull over oh, it for a while. God. Mm-hmm. Actually, I've got to get a random, a random one-line review generator or something. <laughs> Stick the suggestions in. You there. have. It's me. Fire it off. Oh, right. Okay. <laughs> anyway, and then finally, we'll have a bit of. We'll have a, a profanosaurus. Is that okay, Jim? Yes. Yes. Lovely. And one ready. Lovely. Another one in the chamber to use Darren's uh, yep, phrasing. One in the chamber. Um, one to the dome. <laughs> nice. And then we'll uh, be covering Jason and the Argonauts. Um, in tribute custard. to... Oh, sorry. What? You said we're going to be covering Jason the Argonauts in Norway Custard. <laughs> custard. <laughs> oh, God, it's going to be one of these evenings, isn't Yay! it? Yay! Right, okay. Um, yeah, so we'll be covering Jason and the Argonauts for Roasting the Specs um, uh, in honour of, of the passing of Mr. Ray Harryhausen, who died last week, aged 91, I believe. Wow, or good evening. 92. Someone? Um, Anyone? Possibly. Oh, <laughs> Good. I'm, glad, I'm, glad, I'm glad. In his nineties. In his nineties, he had a are. bloody good run. Anyway, so um, let's get started. I guess. Um, well, uh, uh, it's all petered out now. We, we, we're doing quite well before we hit record. Um, Jim, how's your week been? <laughs> um, I mean the, the usual um, Farago <laughs> of rushing around busyness. Mm. 
I did have the pleasure of meeting up with a very old friend who I've not seen for about 15 years, who was in town uh, with his touring theatre company. Oh, very nice. Um, And he's called Hiccup Theatre, and they do theatre for children. And they're currently touring a version of a Rumpelstiltskin, which is Hmm. it's modern, it's got music, but it's properly rustic and dark with the spirit of the Brothers Grimm. And great fun. And I do recommend you go and take and scare your children stupid with it. <laughs> I mean, entertain them. Is there any disemboweling goes on? <laughs> oh, well, they do keep in, if you remember the story, at the mm. end, Wolfman Stiltskin stamps his feet, it goes through the floor, and he tears himself apart. And they, nice. kept, that in. they kept that in, yeah. Spoilers. Uh, <laughs> right, okay. <laughs> nice. Wow. So, so that was good. Um, Fun for all the family. <laughs> I also had another DIY disaster. Lovely. Sort of. <laughs> On Friday, I, I went out to um, see Star Trek Into Darkness. Okay. And when I came back, I found all the smoke alarms in my house were going off. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> uh, I hunted round and I found the cause. It was because the world and his wife had also gone to see Star Trek Into Darkness and the entire internet was in flames. <laughs> 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 Here all week, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> which is which is a lovely segue. Thanks very much, Jim. Into saying that that tomorrow, by the time you hear this, we'll be recording our Star Trek Into Darkness um, special, which has been, shall we say, politely requested by an awful lot of people. <laughs> <laughs> I'll say politely requested. I think I was threatened several times, <laughs> at least once in a pub. <laughs> yeah, we well, you know, we knew it had to be done. Yes, but, uh, more indeed. about that tomorrow. Tomorrow we will, we will deal with that particular elephant in the room tomorrow, mm. um, or whenever you're listening to it. But after this one, there you go. <laughs> anyway, Jim, carry on. <laughs> so, so after you f- you fanned the flames some on um, on Star Trek, uh, <laughs> your internet. <laughs> How anything else? Oh uh, well, that's about it. As uh, apart from doing more yet and more unofficial technical support to my dad's ailing laptop. Oh dear. Um, I think the problem is he has a teenager in his household. Mm. <laughs> that's never oh. a good start. <laughs> Um, you know, if, if Tim and Brad are, uh, are, are listening, could you please come out of retirement and do one last ha- happy times? The complete guide to safely downloading porn. <laughs> it would say, save me an awful <laughs> lot of bother. The incognito tab on Chrome is your friend. Yeah. That's all I'll say. I miss happy times. I miss happy times too. I miss happy times a lot. Yes. Come back, happy times. Come all back. is forgiven. Come back, happy times. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Help us, Obi Wan. The happy times. You're our <laughs> only hope. Um. But yes, yes, yeah. Just, just a little tip from the top there. You know, if you do decide to get a new browser for any of your uh, operating systems, I would recommend Chrome, as it has an incognito tab function. Incognito tab neither downloads anything nor does it save any cookies or history. <laughs> so when you close the tab, everything vanishes. A bit like the private browsing on Firefox. Actually. It is like private browsing on Firefox, except private browsing shows up in your history on Firefox. No, You've doesn't. gone into private browsing. No, it doesn't. Can you can find the you can find out whether or not someone's hit private browsing. I mean, you can't see anything at all. Oh. You just see that you went to private you know, the browsing. Last thing you went to was Google, and that's it. Yes. Okay. Incognito tabs better though. So I've heard anyway. <laughs> Well, let's put it this way. It works on the iPad as well. <laughs> <laughs> That's very portable. Oh, it just reminds me of, uh, you know, that, 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 uh, that thing that Brian Blessed said once. Palm Pilot? Sounds, Sounds like, like a waking, waking machine. machine. <laughs> ah, he was prophetic. Yes, he was. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> iPalm? <laughs> anyway. Bring a whole new meaning to the phrase handheld. Handheld, yeah. Anyway, moving on mm. from uh, internet-based wankery over to another internet-based wanker. <laughs> Darren, how's your week? Uh, well, I've been having adventures in love film. Um, uh, right, I was thought I was going to say. Hold on, <laughs> adventures in love. Yes. Uh, no, he's adventures, in a bowl. Adventures in love film, and we've been uh, we've been going through sort of like the documentary section and seeing oh, yeah. what's in there. Yes, and uh, this week watched two two <laughs> documentaries. Mm. Um, one, both were entertaining. One for all the wrong reasons. Oh dear. Um, 
the first one we'll get the yeah. we'll get the worst one out of the way um mm. was called dungeon masters <laughs> and uh, I, I put it on oh. thinking, oh, it's one about Dungeons and Dragons and people who play it and stuff. And let's let's have a watch of that, shall we? Mm. Now, <laughs> I'm I'm sure. I mean, well, I mean, not everybody who plays Dungeons and Dragons are like the people that the three. I mean, well, one of them was actually quite sort of not special needs, but there were two people in there who were. I don't know. These are probably the worst examples, I think, of people you could, you know, pick to play. And it does <laughs> nothing to um, to smash the stereotype. You know, uh, that, you know they, they, I think they deliberately went for these two. But yeah. um, they had one guy who mm-hmm. basically started off, he, he, he's, a, he's a, I think he plays or he's a dungeon master, this guy mm. was. And um, he... He basically thought he was he was a dog's bollocks at everything. He mm. thought he was an author. All oh, right, um, and he he's one of these sort of people who over exaggerates a condition. All oh, right, okay. Um, it's like now I'll give you an example. Right? Does he have a podcast? And no, he doesn't. But <laughs> <Okay>. um, <laughs> he's he basically there's a bit where he's sitting in his house. Yes, and he's. He, basically, they, they, somebody brought a box into his place and it had mould in it and it's got mm. up his walls. It's like little black spots of mould. Mm. And he's sitting there with a full industrial fucking gas mask on <laughs> saying, oh, I'm slightly sensitive to, to poisonous mould. It's like, poisonous fucking mould? Fuck off. <laughs> it's damp, you twat. It's damp, exactly. <laughs> it, it's like, I don't it's know. It's probably it damp just, from him as well. <laughs> it, oh, mm. it, I just wanted to shake this bloke. Yeah. It's, uh, he starts off by saying that, you know, he's a manager of a, an apartment set and he, he mm. does all this stuff. And you find out he's not actually a manager of anything, right? And it's his wife not only doing his cooking, cleaning and everything else for him, yeah. but she does all the apartment managing. Ah. And she says to him, she's like jokingly, and well, you know, many a, many a thing said in jest, mm. you know. She's at the table with him and they're, they're interviewing him and um, she's saying, yeah, you know, I, I do this here, I do that there, I look after this, I organise that. And, uh, you know, I'm trying to <laughs> I'm trying to get my husband to do a, a couple of hours a week. And I'm not joking, the look he gave her could have taken her head off. <laughs> and it's just, and then he goes on about how, oh, I'm going to be... He didn't do a author. saving throw for so, sarcasm, did he? No, he didn't. <laughs> and then he goes on about how he's going to become an author. So he's writing this book, and he's been writing this book for something like 10 years. Right. And this book... It's something like forty chapters long, and oh. it's something like seventeen thousand pages. And is is it is it called Rod with the Ling? Rod of the Lings? I don't know. I don't know. But he gives it to this woman, and she basically who's this like she she does um uh like mm. you know does the fantasy um fiction stuff like this, mm. and she basically tries to get him to to pare it down because it. Because as he says in his own words, there's lots of information in there people just don't give a fuck about. <laughs> so, um, he manages to get it down to something like 500 pages, this thing. <laughs> and um, she, I think he says, he, you see him have a conversation with her about, because they don't mm. actually play the conversation on, right. the, on the actual film. Yeah. And um, uh, he said, well, I've, I've talked to my publisher. Mm-hmm. And um, she wasn't too impressed with the work, and he's been quite serious about mm-hmm. this. And um, she said something about him being a load of old shit. <laughs> it's like <laughs> nice crashing down to earth. It, it, if you you see this film, you see this bloke. It's it, he starts off, and you, you've, you're quite he's quite likable to begin with. But acting f- five minutes after that, it's just what I don't know. He just turns into a bit of a mm. bit of a twat. Yeah. You know? Um, and the second character is this, this girl who does the yeah. um, not only does the role playing, mm-hmm. um, but she does LARPing as well, so right. live action role playing. Okay. And um, it's they show she gets dressed up like a dark elf. She does the GMing yeah. and that when she goes yeah. to events and stuff like this, and she's got all like all the kit and whatever. And she, you know, she, mm. she uh, really goes out on that yeah. and does the old cosplaying thing. Um, but the thing, the thing that I, that made me laugh about her yeah. it's not her getting dressed up as a dark elf or anything like this yeah it's um she's standing going i i used to go out with this guy um who was into role playing 
but uh, I had to I had to break it up because right. um, all he was doing was playing World of Warcraft and he was taking it far too seriously. And she's saying this while dressed as a dark elf <laughs> in her own flat. She's not going anywhere. She's just dressed as a dark elf. <laughs> she's not, she's <laughs> and you just you look at that and it's like irony. Throw was a fail. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, <laughs> irony fail. Um, so. Uh, so there was that. That was that. <laughs> there was one guy who does GM, and he was, you know, he was just sort of like a pretty straightforward guy. And it's like, well, why couldn't we have seen more of that kind of person rather than you so going it's more to the, exploitative the, kind of do- well, documentary? Well, yeah, there's sort of like you know, not everybody, it, it, you mm. know, there's there, there's a stereotypical thing out there about people who play Dungeons and Dragons, and I think you picked possibly two of the worst, two of the most extreme cases to put on this film. Mm. Because that's more interesting than just having normal people just walk out and exactly. just Saying, tell look, a story. We're not, you know, we don't, yeah. you know, the the stereotype is wrong. It is just the stereotype mm. and, you know, this is what we really like. Yeah. Um, so there was that. Now, yeah. the second one I watched was possibly <laughs> the more famous documentary and that was right. Exit Through the Gift Shop. Oh, right. Which oh, is yes, yes. a Banksy movie. Yeah. Now, when I first heard about this, I thought to myself, what could it possibly what could it possibly be about? It's probably going to be a bunch of surreal sketches and mm. it's not going to be worth my time, you know. Turns out, this is a film about making a film. Right. It's a bit like La Mancha, mm. um, which is a Lost Terry Gilliam thing. Lost in La Mancha, which is a Terry Gilliam film about making, making of the Don Quixote. Killed Don Quixote, yeah, yeah. that's it. The one that, the film that never got made. Mm. Um, and it, it's basically a film made by Banksy about this guy who he met, this French bloke, mm. who is obsessed with filming everything. Right. And um, he he basically came over and he was he was filming all these street eyes. And he finally did get to meet Banksy. Mm. And um, he filmed a lot of his work. And he was saying how he was going to make this documentary. And uh, it got to a point. Where you know he's really made, he's mm. really become quite good friends with Banks. He's proven his worth by because he get mm. he gets caught filming some stuff that Banks is doing in Disneyland because mm. um, he makes a Guantanamo Bay thing. He, what he does is he dresses up this inflatable like a love doll mm. in a orange boiler suit. He puts a black bag over his head and he puts it near fucking <laughs> Wild Mountain. Right, so as the train's coming through, people see this sort of like, you know, mm. this orange boiler suited hooded <laughs> figure. And he's standing there filming it. Banksy's fucked off to the toilet mm. to get changed and get out of his stuff. Yeah. And while he's doing that, all of a sudden, security's descended on this French bloke, you know, and they basically take him out the back. Yeah. Um, he said, they don't look like security, as in mm. uniform-wise, but you can tell they're security because of how big they are. Yeah. And, and they're um, wearing Mickey Mouse hats. No, they're not. They're just like <laughs> they. They're just supposed to be normal tourists, but they all look like they could just, you know, they're built like brick <laughs> fell shit trees. Houses, but yeah, exactly. You know. Yeah. So he basically he manages to get his way out of that, and it's because he kind of took the bullet for mm. Banksy. That Banksy's like, oh man, yeah, this is a bloke I can mm. trust. And to cut a long story short, it turns out this bloke's completely bonkers. Right, right. he's a completely <laughs> mental. Um, he, he, he shoots something like 150,000 hours worth of footage and he just puts it in a tray and locks it in a cupboard. And they go to him, Banksy's like, now's the time to release your film. Mm. So now the pressure's on. So mm. he's like, he pulls out all the trays and everything and he puts this film together. Now, let me describe to you what this film is like. Right. Um, you've seen, um, 28 Days Later, okay, yeah, you've seen the bit where, uh, as it starts, it yeah. shows you a screen and it shows all these people throwing stuff at one another <laughs> and being violent. Yeah, right. Imagine, yeah, ninety minutes of that, right? <laughs> right. Watching ninety minutes of that yeah. while dosed up on sugar, right? <laughs> and you will e- you'll get just an inkling of what this film is like, of what the ma- rage monkeys went through. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And it's it's just like. <laughs> They show this whole because, like Banksy goes, um, and then he he brought the film round, and he showed me the film, and then it shows all this like imagery and stuff, and all this fast moving stuff, and then suddenly it cuts all this like noise, and it's really loud, and suddenly it cuts back to Banksy just sitting in a room, and it goes silent. He just goes, um, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> it's just his reaction, and he's it's it's his reaction for all of this. There's some really. <laughs> Because they do like the talking mm. heads thing, and mm. it's like they've got his face all blacked out and what have you. Yeah. Um, and he actually suggests to this bloke that, you know, maybe you're not a filmmaker, maybe you, you know, you want to go off and create some art for yourself. And I mm. don't know if he was being serious about that, but well, the bloke 
he takes him seriously. Yeah. And he goes off. And from the impression I get, he he basically takes other people's art and yeah. he just puts a blonde wig on it. And that's it. <laughs> and that's his, that's his entire that's outfit. It. That's it. And he just... And you see him build up this... Because he, he goes to do an art show, mm. right? This, this, um, this installation. But it takes up, like, this entire building. It used to be something like a Warner Brothers sound studio or something. Mm. But now it's got a blonde wig on it. And now it's got a blonde wig on it. <laughs> yeah, just stick a fucking blonde wig on it. And he just, like, he's getting all these people to draw the stuff for him and produce it. He's really not doing very much. Right. But he's getting all the credit for it. <laughs> and I, I've got, I won't tell you how it all turns out. Right. But I, I could just yeah. say, just watch the film, because it is, it's really entertaining. Yeah. You know, it's the stuff that, Banksy comes out with some of the stuff he says, mm. and it's the quote. I won't mm. tell you what the quote is, but the quote he gives to the bloke show is just brilliant, right. and it just sums up <laughs> what he thinks of this bloke of his effort. And it, I, you get the feeling that all the street artists that this French guy's talked to, yeah, feel really embittered, yeah, with him for how it's all turned out for him, right? So um, yeah, go watch it. Uh, exit through the gift shop it is well worth a look it's not just 90 minutes of random images or anything like this yeah. it's actually a really entertaining interesting film. entertaining it's a, a lot of the time for all the wrong reasons because of this <laughs> bloke um, it's, especially when he's just about to do his art installation and you see him they, they show these still <laughs> photographs of him doing this like mural on the wall and it's saying you know so and so is uh, he's now getting ready he's like just a day to go and he's doing this one big piece of advertising mm. and it's like all going really well when all of a sudden it all went so very wrong and they just show you <laughs> somebody's they, they've got this they've got this bloke taking pictures and they show you the pictures of blokes taking of him putting all his stuff up yeah. and you see him frame by frame falling off the fucking ladder <laughs> <It's> just, <laughs> the bloke's not running to help him it's just <laughs> Just continue to take a rapid girls. shot of him all the way down to the ground. Exactly. Nice. So uh, it's, and there's <laughs> other stuff that he does, like okay. on the fucking um, scooter or something. He's got over himself up while he's got this broken leg, and you know, like catching yeah. on stuff and going ass over <laughs> tip forwards and stuff. Okay. So I don't know if the blokes are real. I th- I've actually, I think he is a real. He's actually real. He's not just something made up by Banksy. Mm. He's called Mister Brainwash. Mr. Ah, but Br- the thing is, though, there is rumours that this whole documentary is a hoax in itself. Really? I, yeah. You know what? I, really, uh, I really hope it isn't. I, I would. <laughs> it's. It would just be. It. I, there's something about the fact that there's this mental French bloke out there doing this. Yeah. I find rather funny, and I think it would be quite disappointing if this was all one big joke. Especially you know? since you fall for it, hook, line, sinker, and copy of Angling Times. <laughs> well. Who knows? Maybe it is. I did sit there thinking that, you know, if this is a hoax. I said that to Laura. It's like, I hope this isn't. Because yeah. I'd be really disappointed that there isn't a real fella like this out well, there. Yeah. Well, um, yeah. I'll, I'll check it out because I, 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 I've looked at it a couple of times and thought, oh, I'd give that a look. But I don't know if I just, or not yeah. just, it'd be Banksy just drawing balloons on shit. And no, it, it's not. It's mm. it's it's chronicling this this bloke and his his, his obsession with filming. It tells right. you why he's so obsessed with filming everything. Yeah. Okay, you know, it takes it back to his family. Yeah. Blah blah blah. Cool. Um, but it is kind of like an art house Spinal Tap, <laughs> right? Right. In, okay. in places, it's, it's none kind more of like black. That. None more black. <laughs> yeah, it's as black as black. It couldn't be any blacker. Yeah. So yeah, I highly recommend it. That's me done. I'm out. That's it. Oh, that's your whole week, is it? That's it. Peace out. (laughs) Yeah, I've Um My week has been sitting in my pants staring at episodes of Ultimate Spider Man. (laughs) (laughs) We win. No, um No, I went to see um Star Trek Into Darkness with Andy Palastides. And Laz, um, who's on the Facebook group, yes, he um, is. I, which is a bit freaky because that's my first moment of being recognised by someone I didn't actually know. That was kind of a bit weird. I was standing outside the Empire Leicester Square, and all of a sudden, mm. someone just comes and goes, "You're Lee, right?" And you're I'm like, "The Black Door Podcast, um, aren't you?" I, exactly. I was something very similar. I'm like, "Don't hit me! I don't know who you are." So that was good. Um, yeah, went I met to, him. Met him at the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy um, live radio about yeah. two years ago. I think. He, yeah, I think he actually mentioned that. And um, yeah, so that was cool. Um, 
went to see the film. We'll talk about that next, tomorrow. And um, what else did I do? Oh, well, I went <laughs> went to went to the pet <laughs> the pet pet show at Earl's Court. The pet show. The pet show. Yeah, the kids. Well, was this a penthouse um, exhibition? I, I, do you know what? If it was, I would have been so much happier. But, <laughs> but as it was, it was actually basically well, Earl's Court Two. Earl's Court Two. Yeah, not the one we saw at Pink Floyd at, but the you know the, the convention centre right next door, the big fucking aerodome thing. Yeah, that's that's where I went to erotica. Nice. Um, yes, erotica, yeah, it sounds a lot more erotica fun. Ninety eight, I think yeah. it was. I went to there. That's uh, yeah. That's that's quite an eye opener. Yeah, I saw a different kind of pussy. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, um, and that was. I mean, it was good. I mean, the kids loved it. They did all these dog training things and dog episodes, and then basically up the back, up the back is like what I basically called sort of like dog heaven because basically they had a stall for every single type of dog and there were actually dogs in it that you could go up and you could stroke and basically the weirdest bit happened we came across this this it's not a pug but it's a dog that looks very pug like and um he was called buttons and basically he looked like Winston, the black dog mascot. Really? He even had a little, even a little red necklace. Why don't you nick ne- him? No, well, I tried to, but they wouldn't let me. And so Carol insisted on I, me picking him up and taking a photograph of him. And you've never seen a dog look so unimpressed in all your Where life. Is it? of being Where is photo? It's on her phone. I'm going to put it on the, <laughs> on the Facebook group. Yeah, it's it's funny. It's just it's it's like a little tiny kind of half chihuahua half pug thing and it looks the most singularly unimpressed animal in a in a square kilometer you could have possibly found he just was it was not having any of it <laughs> but yeah i picked him up standing there he's obviously never thing. listened to a podcast and didn't i think he has that's you. why he looked like he didn't, oh, right. didn't want to be associated with it to be honest <laughs> um so yeah so we did that that was quite cool um do you know you remember lisa's um cupboards wardrobe that, yes the wardrobe yeah. of doom. The wardrobe of RC gloom. Um, and basically, long story short, we've replaced it. But all the all the equipment turned up, all the bits turned up. Yeah, I thought, fantastic. I'm going to do this properly. I'm going to start photographing it. I'm going to do this <laughs> fucking right. Got a nice empty space. Open up the box. Took all the bits out. Stacked them all up neatly. Checked them all off because, because like you know, remember first of June I'm going to the Shonky Lab and they want me to do a DIY special. <laughs> I'm actually going to get some flat pack furniture in for you to build. I bloody hope not. I'll be dead before it finished recording. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, that's so, going to be an interesting weekend. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm only up there for the Saturday. But anyway, so I'm unpacking it all, taking photographs as I go, and it's like get all the way to the bottom. And where's the screws? Where's the pins? Where's the dowel rods? Where's the glue? Not there. Hasn't turned up. And do you know what? I had a rage out. I had a proper... Because I'm on my own. Carol's not there. I'm like... Uh, she 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 left the house as soon as she knew I was going to do this thing. She just left. And <laughs> basically, <laughs> I'm like... I'm like, I haven't got any bits. There's none of the fucking bits. I've got all these planks of wood. And I just... It just like... I'd been, I'd even gone like to full on dad in a shed mode. I had my phone hooked up to uh, to iPlayer playing Radio Two, so I had some nice sort of middle of the road inoffensive music trying to keep me calm. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then basically, this, I've got all this shit out, and there's no fucking screws. And I'm like, Do you fucking, you can fucking go. I lost the plot, and I stamped. And I stamped and I yelled and I hollered and I roared and I fucking swore and I spat and I fucking went red. And I stepped, walked straight out of the room. And as I did that, I stepped on a plank and smacked myself in the balls with a plank that was hinged over. <laughs> it just went toink, bang. Oh, fuck. And then I got really angry and I threw it all in the corner. So now in Katie's room, there's a, <laughs> it's a bonfire. Yeah, pretty much. It's basically, an un, uh, it's basically an unlit bonfire sitting in the corner <laughs> waiting for bits to turn up. Yeah, That's Carol cute. Carol came back and actually said on the Facebook, you know, like, you know, there's no bits, couldn't put it all together. So, you know, he's he's not building it anymore. 
which is the shorthand version for he's sitting on the sofa still raging at the guys from Argos for not delivering all the bits. <laughs> and then all Jim could put as a fucking reply was, what was it, Jim? Ambulance crew, stand down. Thank you. <laughs> bit sarcastic bastard. You know, you talking about this mm-hmm. just reminds me of a... There's a there's a Jack D sketch where he talks yeah. about how his dad used to oh, do DIY. Oh, decorating. Yeah, it was like his mum would like, you know, as soon as she heard the, the rush of air going into his lungs, he'd be like, come on, kids, let's get out of the house. <laughs> it was. It was just like, what the fuck? I mean, I, I was so trying to do it properly. And then I got scuppered. And then I punched myself in the balls with a plank. <laughs> oh, lovely. Cunt. It so. does sound classic like Jack G when he called his dad's DIY werewolfery. Because <laughs> <laughs> he said his mum would just gather the kids together and just take them out of the house yeah. for a safe distance. And you'd hear at first this happy whistling. It's kind of like continued. This kind of. I could do this for a living whistle. <laughs> and then a few hours later, it's just replaced with... <laughs> well, that was, that's very, very, very accurate. <laughs> oh, that's right. Yeah. <coughs> yeah, that was... Um, yeah. I mean, you know... I was. I felt. I felt like I'd sort of escaped because the smack in the balls was only one testicle. It kind of came up slightly off centre. Yeah, don't matter. You know, just mm. brush past that and it's like, oh, yeah. I think playtime is over. Yeah, that's you know? it. Yeah, that's it. I'm... Yeah. That's why there's only one Sven Gooley, folks. <laughs> <laughs> well, Von Gooley. Um, but anyway, um, <laughs> other than that, I've um, oh, I was watching some film on on film four that just made no sense to me whatsoever but then again it was in french i can't remember what that was um subtitles yeah there were subtitles there was knockers and subtitles so i think it, you know oh, typical right. french sort of midnight on channel four <laughs> um fin yeah Lithin. <laughs> um and then i watched um i watched jason and the argonauts i will say for the record before we get to it though that i've tried to watch it four times uh, the reason being is I I think there's something in the actual plastic or some, Carol's basically laced something in the plastic of my iPad cover because basically every time I pick it up I just nod off. I'm turning in a silly old fuck. I'm just like sitting there, sitting there, no one around in me pants. I'm gonna watch Jason and the Argonauts. I pick this thing up and I'm. <laughs> like, is that yeah. during the morning or? Yeah. Christ almighty. Yeah. Yeah. At least I'll wait until the evening, man. No, I've, Come on. I've fucking right nodding off. So, um, yeah, that's that. So I have I have watched this film four times <laughs> in various bits and pieces and then finally watched it completely. Um, what else did I do? Did you not watch it with the kids? No, because it was on the iPad. I wasn't going to have them all oh. gathering around. Um, what else was it? Oh, I've I've resurrected the um, the, the bike, the, the exercise bike. Yeah, and I managed to watch. Um, I managed to do. I managed to do an hour on it now. Each time I watched Doctor Who, did an hour, and I got so pissed off with that that I basically pedaled really fast. And apparently, I used up six hundred calories according to the monitor. Woo! Woo! And then, um, it's not just being used as a clothes horse then. No, no, <laughs> no, it's not. See, there's no clothes resting on it. There is a, a cello resting on it. <laughs> there is a cello. Okay. There is a cello. It's a cello stand. It's a cello stand. Yeah. Um. Other than that, I think that's about it. Really, I just um. It's so lonely. <laughs> I'm so lonely. Um, but next week, just to let everyone know, I'm starting my visual effects course. Uh. Right? So, while that shouldn't make any difference to our schedule, there is a possibility, obviously, that I might get slightly obsessed with this thing and it may throw things completely out of whack. So, just saying that now. So join us in August, ladies and gentlemen, for our <laughs> review of Catwoman. <laughs> well, actually, yeah. In in fairness, if that's the case, um, I'll probably probably won't see you until September. Yeah. But um. Bye. However, let's worry about that when it comes to it. Yeah. Um. Oh, the only other thing, the only other thing which has come up this week, pardon the phrasing, is um something Carol's doing, which I which has only happened in the last twenty four hours. Um, and she and um, our other good friend um, Leslie Gold um, are are going to do a charity thing for. Si- getting naked for money. Yeah, 
for um, what's it? It's, it's, it's Sh- Sumatran Tigers. Basically, there's a charity for Sumatran Tigers, and it's being hosted by the London Zoo. And basically, it turns out that a group of tigers is called a streak. So someone put two and two together and has basically come up with a charity flash run (laughs) through London Zoo. Can we just someone check there are tigers in Sumatra? (laughs) And someone someone hasn't just hired out London Zoo (laughs) with a set of cameras. But anyway, so um, yeah, so I put it on the Facebook group and it's on my Facebook wall. Um, there's a just giving page for Carol, uh, but basically she's got to wear. All she's got to be able to wear is running shoes, a tiger mask, and do 350 yards. This is all getting a bit eyes Keep... wide shut, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it is. It is. <laughs> yeah. Interestingly, Pete of the Shonky Lab was the first person to um, su- suggest that perhaps he would donate if she did it. Oh, Reading well, to go. that, what you will. <laughs> 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 but anyway, so um, <laughs> there you go. So um, <laughs> and tonight's wooden spoon award goes to <laughs> your stir, 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 stir. Um, <laughs> Well, I'm just getting it in now, Jim, because I know full well that when I turn up and they give me a flat pack or you know <laughs> fucking shelf or something to put yep. up, I'm just going to end up dead. So I'm just trying to just get this in now. Um, so there you go. Uh, I, I don't know what inspires a woman to suddenly decide that she's going to run 350 yards in a tiger mask through London Zoo. I'm intrigued. Are they supplying the tiger masks so yes. they'll all be identical? That's good. So yes. it'll be a random selection of like, there's a Tony the Tiger there. <laughs> They're great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Lion King. Well, you know, it, it, I mean, as fun as it sounds, probably the standard watching it is probably not advisable because, uh, you know, not everybody who turns up is going to have a perfect body, of course, and uh, no. could put you off of uh, chipolatas and Brussels sprouts for the rest of your life. You know, <laughs> them yeah. flying up and down like it, that. Exactly. It could, it, could, it could put me off a walnut whip forever. Mm. Or, or as I said, or as I said on... It's um, cold, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> or as I said to Carol, you know, if they've got starting blocks and we're all standing behind them, it's going to look like a fucking Google map of, of a golf course from space. <laughs> <laughs> or it's going to be like the most, the crappiest graffiti by a ghost ever. Ooh. <laughs> Pucker up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, <laughs> Nelly the elephant. Back. Oh, sorry. Never mind. Anyway, on the on the plus side, though, she suddenly um the the, the membership the membership of the local gym has gone up by one, mm. <laughs> unsurprisingly. <sighs> anyway, shall we move on to some news? Let's do some news. Yes. <laughs> Hey, we're gonna hear some news now. Right, okay, the news. So, let's start off with possibly the most what-the-fuck news of the day, which is Arnold Schwarzenegger has um, possibly been cast for uh, the Toxic Avenger remake. Wow, not going to be much makeup needed there then. No. Well, the thing is, just when you thought it was going to be like he's going to be a random cameo in it, apparently he's headlining in it, which has now led to rumours that he is Toxy himself. I think so. He's He's gone a bit Wizzo in his old age. He's, you know, he's looking a bit <laughs> sort of like Melty Candle. He looks like a discarded <laughs> carrier bag full of cat shit. Yes, he does. <laughs> With a hat on. He looks like a haunted, crumpled tin can. <laughs> <laughs> So um we've had haunted candle, we've had haunted tin can now. Yes, exactly. Um so so has anyone actually seen the Toxic Avenger, the original? 
I have years and years and years ago. Yeah. And I was very, very drunk as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think it was the fourth film in one of those great cider and four videos from the local video shop. Oh, Teenage God. Teenage video marathon. So yes. my memories of it are very, very hazy. Mm. But it was a trauma film, which was kind of, depending on your temperate, either amazing or was my camp is totally shit. <laughs> <laughs> so you were excited about this Arnold Schwarzenegger remake then? <laughs> well, it's more, I mean, as I posted on Twitter, when I saw the news, is it April again already? <laughs> <laughs> you know, is, is this a joke? I mean, what? <laughs> yeah, do what? Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I mean, personally, I think, you know, if he's going to be in it, then Arnie needs food badly. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, you know, all, all that abusing his sort of housemaids has clearly taken its toll on his financial situation. So we obviously Get to the conservatory. <laughs> it is all we have left. We Hopefully the sun will come the, uh, out and provide us with heat. Uh, taste cool. of expendables out of his mouth. That's what it is. Oh, well, it'd be the taste of cock out of his mouth if he carries on in this this, cr- cr- this trajectory. I will suck your cock for money. <laughs> I will dance on your wank for coins. God. Sorry, gag reflex. Mm, anyway, moving on. Uh, um, next piece of news is that um, they're rebooting, remaking, reimagining, re wallpapering fucking Gremlins. Um, so they're not making a Gremlins 3. Um, but basically, they are possibly. Well, they're possibly making a sequel or possibly a reboot. According to Denny Geek, it's a, it's a sequel. However, according to several other sources like Badass Digest and Ain't It Cool News, it's a reboot. Um, however, it turns out that um, according to um, bloodydisgusting.com, uh, um, Seth Graham Greene, who penned Dark Shadows and Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter, has now been hired to write it which means it's going to be depressingly boring. Um, I, I mean, did you, have, has anyone seen Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter? No, I wanted to, but... Yeah? You know, we live in a world where I want to go and see a film called Abraham Lincoln <laughs> Vampire Hunter. In another universe, you're looking at me going, no, why would I do that? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, I want to live in that universe. I don't want to sit in a, <laughs> with a man who wants to watch Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter. <laughs> Have you seen it, Jim? <laughs> no, I've heard people say it's actually not bad. Um, it's, it's you know, it's a dumb fun film. Mm. Um, however, I've not heard anyone say that about Dark Shadows, which I've also not seen. So, mm. <laughs> yeah, well, Seth Graham... kind of doesn't strike me as the right man for the job. <laughs> no, well, Seth Graham Greene's other credit is um, writing um, Pride and Prejudice Zombies, which isn't out yet. Uh, no, um, uh, yes, um, no, no, I think he's talking about the actual book. Oh, did he write that? Yeah. Mm. Wow. So, um. Okay. Yes, um, that's about it, really. I, I mean, are we look. I mean, do we need another Gremlins movie in our lives, or would we you... fucking don't? It's like, we, you know, we <laughs> need it as much as a fucking Ghostbusters 3. That's, mm-hmm. uh, mm. We don't. No. Is it? Stop it now. Yes. Stop it. What is the reason for remaking it? It's, mm. you know, what's wrong with watching <laughs> the original? Yeah. Oh, it was set in the 80s, wasn't it? Oh, well, there you go then. That's that's the, all the reason you need. Yeah, even though we seem to be living in the 80s once more with the fashion and everything else. <laughs> <laughs> go fuck yourself. Yeah, there we go. Right, there you go. Thanks for that. Yeah. Um, Next thing... Um, uh, <laughs> Um, Paul Giamatti, Giamatti, um, or Giamatti, sorry, Giamatti. Yeah. Oh, anyway, Paul, uh, Paul, <laughs> as he's known to his friends, um, he's he's his pictures started appearing um, for his turn in as the Rhino in Spider Man Two. Um, so far, no sign of him actually in Rhino gear. However, there does seem to be one of him angrily driving what looks like a dumper truck now um have you seen this picture there dal there you go that's that's the one from den and geek which has got him with various scars and 
tattoos and what right. have you all over his head. Now, the one person caught um, a, a spy photo of him uh, from the waist down, getting into the truck where the official picture was launched. And this may give you a clue as to why he's called the Rhino. It's because on his pants, the pattern is red and yellow rhinos. That's it. That's it. <laughs> I've got a bad feeling about this. <laughs> <laughs> so, so yes. Yeah, so, if you go to badassdigest.com and look up the news story about this, you, you can see that the only reference to him being a rhino is actually on his boxer shorts, which he wears while driving a truck through things. So, apparently, that's why they call him the rhino, because he wears rhino pants and bulldozes his way through things with a truck right okay i'm so sorry <laughs> i'm so so sorry i mean I, to, to be quite honest i couldn't give a fuck because i didn't really dig the last spider-man movie at all i understand people liked it yourself included yeah and that's fine but for me it was just a kind of meh kind of movie it didn't really sort of appear or or do anything um slightly off to slightly off the, the sort of geeky pe- beaten path but worth noting anyway um horrible histories team and if you haven't watched horrible histories go seek it out because yeah, it is it, the best kids show on tv ever all right that's the end of that no i'm broken broken no argument on this um because basically it's monty python for kids um they are doing a movie based on William Shakespeare, which is due out in 2014. And oh, you know you what? forward to that. I am actually looking forward to that. There you go. Have you seen any horrible histories, Jim? I've only seen a couple. I should see more because it was kind of... Yes, now this is what children's television should be about. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> Educational and funny. And mm. and basically covered from head to foot in shit and lopped off limbs. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, essentially, if you want to know what horrible histories is like, just watch that bit in... Um, that bit in um, her Monty Python and the Holy Grail, where it's like, come and see the uh, uh, violence inherent in the system, you know, and you know, <laughs> and basically that scene. And how do you know he's a king? Well, he hasn't got shit on him. That <laughs> that essentially sums up horrible histories yeah. in a nutshell. Um, it's brilliant and it's well worth checking out. It's all over YouTube and there's lots of you know jokes and gags and musical numbers and what have you. So I'm actually looking forward to that. It's probably the only bit of news I'm actually looking forward to, to be honest, because there's something about um, Independence Day, which, um, do you want to just sum that up? Because my iPad's being incredibly so, Jim. Yeah, right, yo. Apparently, um, Roland Emmerich and Dean Devlin attended a screening of Independence Day, and they were quizzed about what was happening with the um, sequels. Hmm. Because there was, there was a plan to re-release, re-release the original in 3D, Mm. Um, now that has had the decent thing done with it and it's been flushed away (laughs) Um, and apparently I quote as regards to the sequels um, Emmerich said things have to align the planets have to get together Mm. Um, which the upshot is they're not happening we just have to wait for Dan Aykroyd to say the same thing for Ghostbusters 3 yeah well, if we could only cancel M. Night Shyamalan's After Earth, um, I'll be a happy man. I've seen that <laughs> fucking trailer twice, and I've worked out the twist. Oh, God. Do you, is it the ti- me- it's clues in the title, which is an anagram <laughs> of the ear fart. Ear fart? <laughs> 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 so, so what you're basically saying is it's all in his head. <clears throat> I think the twist is that they're on Earth, and they've dropped the ball and actually given that away in the trailer. Hmm. <laughs> well, I'm or in the bloody title. Um, mm. I, I, <laughs> I mean, the only twist, the only twist I can see coming is actually it's um, it's all a big training simulation. Yeah, I think that's it. I think that's what it's going to turn out to be in the end. It's a big training simulation. Well done, you've done this, and then he presses a button and the hologram switches off. Now we can go hunting on Earth, son. Da, da, da. Roll credits, the end. Mm. Mm. And maybe M. Night Shyamalan and Ding Dong turning up as like the big <laughs> fat face of the hologram 
<laughs> you know, some something important yet ultimately shallow. Um, <laughs> <laughs> hmm. um the only other thing I was going to say is there's um, a rumor um, for for Avengers Two of all things, which is Saoirse Ronan, Ronan, who I saw in Byzantium and who was also in um, Hannah. And also in um, oh that other bloody film which I keep forgetting, but anyway, she's very good in it. And and that terrible bloody Stephanie Meyer thing called the host. Apparently, he's being um, you know, is is apparently in line to play the Scarlet Witch in Avengers Two. Who is this? See, she Ronan. Um, she. I don't know, I'll get a picture of it and you can see. Yeah, she was in um. Oh, God. She was in Hannah, which I obviously mentioned. Yeah. I'm trying to see what the other film was. Oh, I can't bloody find it. Oh, I'm rubbish. Anyway, yeah, she looks a bit like that. Yeah, I, I'm just trying to picture her as the Scarlet Witch. Witch. And it's like... Uh, um, uh, yeah. She doesn't look old enough for that costume. Can we leave it at that? <laughs> yeah, I think we're treading on dangerous ground now. It's yeah. like, are we back into Marion Darbo? Um, I think so. Yeah, we're back into Marion Darbo territory yeah. now, are we? Well, no, no. Seriously, this, the Scarlet Witch is a very voluptuous character, mm. and I'd say this actress is a bit on the young side. <laughs> she doesn't. That. Yeah. That's the most delicately put I've <laughs> ever heard that kind of phrase, Jim. And you must be saluted for that. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. Plus, also there is um, if she's going to be in Avengers two, there. I mean, there was that whole thing of right. Well, let me get this straight. You're going to have Magneto's daughter and her brother in the Avengers. Hmm. So, how does that work? Because then you have to acknowledge mutants, and you have to acknowledge the X Men, which you can't because well, they're not on the same license. Hmm. They're owned by someone completely different. And uh, I did read, apparently, they're going to gloss all over that. They're just not going to go anywhere near that at all, oh. mention mutants or whatever. Yeah. Well, I mean, if we... Well, it depends on the terms of the copyright, isn't it? Because I can't imagine um, they shelled out for the copyright for every single X-Men. No. Otherwise, they'd be bankrupt. So, But they have got Magneto. But the, um... Scarlet, Witch, the Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver, which are Magneto's children... Yeah. Mm. Um, doesn't get revealed in the X Men. It gets revealed in Avengers. They were already in Avengers well along. It's all a bit twisty, turny, timey, wimey, mm-hmm. wibbly wobbly bollocks. But awkward. it's awkward, awkward, exactly. So I think in the grand scheme of things, their their rights are still. I think I think the X Men rights are basically the core X Men, not the spin offs and the backgrounds and the. You know, side characters because if that's the case, in theory, the Avengers are also in there. So well, you're talking at least hundreds, if not possibly thousands, of characters. Mm. If you get the the full set of X Men or X Persons. Yes, X People. <laughs> X People. Yeah, but it, when the, they're related to hmm. the one character who they can't mention, it kind of. You know what are they going to do for a backstory for these people? It's yes. like because later on, if they if Marvel do happen to regain the rights to X Men, hmm. not that I'm saying they were going to put them in the Avengers or anything yeah. like this, because I think there's a there seems to be this growing thing of every time they mention the fact that Marvel's hmm. got the rights to a superhero back, everybody's expecting them to be in the next Avengers film, and it's like, yeah, basically you're going to have a cast of thousands the way it's going. <laughs> You know, and it ain't going to happen like that. I I wouldn't want to see every single one of their properties in the Avengers maybe mentioned, you know, or the, you know, in those separate properties, somebody mentioning the Avengers in there or, you know, mm. making a passing reference. But, um, you know, we don't have to see every single superhero they manage to get back into the fold in an Avengers film. I think wow. it would just be saturation and, you know... <laughs> Well, yeah. I mean, if if it was, um, but I would say if there was, um, if there was a kind of, uh, you know, sort of fantasy fantasy um, casting, who would you have for the Scarlet Witch? 
Ooh. I don't know. Um, a fancy casting. Mm. Now, I'm only going on physicality. Well, <laughs> yeah. This is it. It's like, you know, mm. what the character looks like. Um, mm. I don't know. Somebody uh, very sort of Jennifer Connolly esque. Do you know what? That's exactly Ooh. who I would have said. Yeah. Um, is it Jennifer Connolly from. Um, do you remember that, that old 90s film called Career Opportunities? The one where she's with that bloke and they go and do the things in the supermarket. And yes. Go, yeah, that. That age. That age. <laughs> not. Not. Labyrinth age. <laughs> no. <laughs> That, um, those pictures I'm showing to you now on the iPad. That's that's the Scarlet Witch. Yes. Yes. That's basically her. Yes. Stop staring at them. You'll get hairy palms. Hold on. Stop it. Stop <laughs> it. Put it down. I think we need to take a minute. No. <laughs> <laughs> They'll now be a short... <laughs> They'll be a short intermission. Yeah, not that one either. Not that one. Stop okay. that. <laughs> Dirty but, uh, Yeah, you... you I, I, I'm going to keep I, that page I thought... bookmarked. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um... But anyway. Someone Jennifer Connolly esque. Um, yes, but anyone now, who would you have? Who would I have now? Let's see, who would be? Because I mean, I don't know. I couldn't. I can't think of anyone you could have. I don't think there's anyone you could have. I mean, I, actually, I do think of one, but I think she's too old. Who's that? Monica Bellucci. Very good. She would she would be a Scarlet Witch esque mm. car- yeah. look, but I don't think she'd be able to carry it off because, as as we know, <laughs> as we know now from the Matrix sequels, English is not her first language, and therefore <laughs> is not the best. <laughs> she's not the best at delivering lines in that language. <laughs> but there you go. Um, let's see um, now, don't. Are you going to get yourself into trouble? Are we? Are we literally <laughs> going to be? Are we going to be essentially owning up to some Jimmy Savile here? At no, this no, point? no, no. This is no, this is none, none of that at all. I'm just thinking of um, an actress who's who may be young enough. Go on, um, but would have to go for a, a dye job on the hair. If you say Chloe Moritz, I'm cutting no, his off. No, 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 no. <laughs> dirty, dirty bird. No, not Chloe Moritz. Um, I'm thinking of uh, you know one of my my favourite sort of like Hollywood redheads. Go on, go on. Um, I've forgotten her fucking name. Christina then. Hendricks. Yeah, mm. but she uh, she does serious. She's done the serious stuff with Mad Men. She's got the Alison Brie. Alison. Ooh, ooh. Alison Brie, she's still yeah. a very slight character, and Scarlet Witch is a bit. I mean, she's a bit fulsome. More. You can say she's got big tits now. I think everyone's listened to us for 156 <laughs> episodes yeah. knows really what we're alluding to at this point. I don't think we can. I don't think we're going for it. No, I don't think we're there's going no for avoiding. It. There's no avoiding it with Scarlet Witch. I don't, uh, like, I don't think subtlety's our middle name it's like, anymore. You know, uh, who would you cast as Power Girl? You know, it's like. Easy. One of the big kind of no, no. You, you the best best person to do that would be Katie Sackhoff. Best power girl. Yeah, you think she's so? got the look. She's got. She doesn't necessarily have the monstrous nooks, but no, she. she <laughs> well, I don't know. It. I don't. I mean, but I don't think the monstrous nooks are the definition of power girl. To be honest, I think they well, are. They, they, I they think are. They are. Well, I think you look at the, the humour <laughs> and everything. It's like you know the whole posters of oi. They're up here. Yeah. That, you know, that sort of... Exactly. Um, but that's no, the in-joke with the... That's the in-joke with the bloody artist. I think the character herself is actually not all about well, the Well, the tits. new 52 stuff. No, even the old one. She's completely different in that now. Even um, the old one. No, the old one is comedy. It's like the She-Hulk stuff, right? Mm. The She-Hulk. Oh, oh, that's just reminding me. There was a there was a news story. I really wanted to find it. It was going to turn it. It was going to sort of end up being Shonky Lab. But there was a news story about a woman who went on a rampage at a cosplay fair dressed up as She-Hulk. And really? then basically, she, and then after that, she went on a massive rampage, beat four people up, left, and then basically turned over. <laughs> Turned over a petrol station. <laughs> really? <laughs> and there's a news report of this person phoning up, going, "Yeah, I've just been attacked and robbed by the She-Hulk, and she took four <laughs> cokes and a, a Snickers bar." <laughs> I'll have that. 
Oh man! Oh, oh I wish I found that. Well, <laughs> it isn't easy being green. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. I'm a, and a girl in a man's world, or you know. Anyway, yeah, I, I don't know. They'd probably. I mean, but the the actress they've chosen. We'll have to wait and see. I, I don't know. She doesn't. She look. It's like Anna Packin when they picked her for for Rogue. Rogue. She just. I don't know. It's just the wrong person for it. You know, she was mm. just, I don't know, Rogue's a bit Rogue's a bit cheeky, and mm. Anna Packing in that role, she wasn't. No, but that's the writing. Joss Whedon. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Did I say that out loud? Mm. <coughs> anyway, moving on. Right, well, I think that's about it for the news, isn't it? Uh, oh, the Avengers, um, uh, the trailer for the TV show. Oh, S.H.I.E.L.D. S.H.I.E.L.D., yes. Agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. Have Agent you seen this, Jim? S.H.I.E.L.D. I haven't yet, no. I've seen very stills of it and lots of kind of, ooh, is that play kind of yeah. <laughs> wild yeah. speculation going do you, around. Do you want to go and watch it? It's only about 30 mm. seconds long. We can always have a, you know... An albatross. A, an albatross mm. moment. On your behalf, man. Yes. All right, let's do that then. Okay, <laughs> do it. There will now be a short intermission. Albatross! And uh, for Michael G. Cock, I'd just like to say, ha, 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 we never missed that trailer. Much? <laughs> no! There you go. Sorry. Um, yes, we nearly fell foul of the Black Dog News curse, but we actually caught that just at the last second, so there you go. And it's all thanks to Jim. All oh, thanks to Jim not having seen the other trailer, which we were referring to. Hmm. We weren't really catching the extended one by planning it at all. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to get the tea. What did everyone think of that trailer, then? That was looked fabulous. Mm. So it's Joss Whedon. It looks good. Um, what do you reckon? Cancelled in six episodes or seven? <laughs> I know, but do, do you notice who one of the uh, the guys in that was? Don't you? The, the actors. It's the guy who played Gun in Angel. Mm. Yes. Yeah. Yes. J. August mm. um, Richard. J. August Richard. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. So he's yeah. obviously the uh, the token superhero in the team. Yes. Yeah. There's bound to be more of them, I guess. Hmm. But um, interesting, cool. I'm looking forward to that. Um, Same here. Feels but... back. Mm. <laughs> Don't touch Lola. Anyway, um, I think that's it for the news then. After all that, so uh, yes, it is. I think. Yeah. Anything else? Nope. Uh, nope. Right. Brilliant. Do we have anything in the format that comes in after the news? <laughs> Uh, Darren? We, we might do. <laughs> but you're not supposed to ask me that question. I was supposed I, to spring that on you. Are you? Yes. Well, I was giving you enough leeway and a bit of time. By but saying, don't we have something else that comes after the news, Lee? <laughs> yeah. I swear we have something <laughs> else that well, comes after the news. Well, I thought that was the other way around, but that's just No, me. it but, isn't. Is it before or after? Answers on a postcard, please, to it's the Black Dog at Geek, Geek, Black Dog at GeekPlanetOnline.com. Which came first? The one sentence review or Jim Moon's Profanosaurus? Profanosaurus! Go, Jim. Go. Right then, I shall move the adult art <laughs> magazines and get the big dusty tome out. <laughs> get out your dusty tomes. <laughs> oh, dear. It's been a while. Didn't need, I didn't need that vision in my head. <laughs> Mm. Listen, Jim will be getting out his tomes on the Tiger Run. So. <laughs> <laughs> London. <laughs> Behold my Necromicon. That would never happen. No. Me, run, dear me. <laughs> Standing naked in a zoo, that's perfectly acceptable. <laughs> <laughs> Driving around in a wing back armchair, possibly. But <laughs> it's all down the old gym. Just put some wheels on it. <laughs> Just all the casters. No, it's all coming back to Mick Hogan with his pink pancakes in it. Why have I got a vision of Jim rolling downhill, start bollock naked through a zoo? <laughs> Why? 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 Quick to the Profanosaurus. To the Profanosaurus. Go, Jim. What have you got for us this week? Eros. <laughs> Noun. One of the original gods of Olympus, the son of Aphrodite, 
whose mischievous interventions in the love affairs of gods and mortals were legendary, literally. However, also, euphemism. For that pose that must be struck when pissing in a toilet with no lock on the door. <laughs> carelessly balanced on one leg while with the other holding said door shut. <laughs> <laughs> Never been there. Never. <laughs> no. None, we have no idea what you're talking about, Jim. <laughs> of course, you could do the double or nothing as well, which is where you've got the toilet that's got the toilet seat that won't stay up unless you put a knee against it. Plus also no lock on the toilet door behind you as well. Fucking hell. If you're going for a pit. Yeah, I know. In- interesting pissing positions. I'm going to read the book <laughs> about this. I'm, I'm writing it as we go. Oh, thank you very much for that, Jim. <laughs> right. Well, <laughs> that was lovely. Um, and, um, yes. I am available for children's parties. <laughs> or plumbing. Or hey. plumbing. Yes. <laughs> Have you seen this movie? No. Yeah, well timed. Okay, so right. and this week's suggestion yes. is from uh, uh, Mr. Org's wife, Mrs. Mm. Org. Mrs. Or- Anne Marie. Yes. Anne okay. Marie, that's right. Well, and, I met in the uh, pub the other day. Sorry? I met her in the pub the other day. You did? Yes. What, just by chance? Or? No, they were there for a birthday party and I shanghaied it. Ah, right. But I was in the pub anyway. Anyway, go on, carry on. Go on. Um, <laughs> Change we'll subject. go for this one. Yes. Um, she sent three in, but we'll we'll go for the very first one she sent go in, on. which is uh, the 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 one line review she wants this week is SpongeBob SquarePants the movie. What the <laughs> fuck? <laughs> fuck you. What? Uh, is always right. Fuck. Are we doing? Are we doing just one line or until I run out of breath? Um, I think my line can substitute since you're running out of breath. Of course, it's in the way. So, uh, it's got to be enough to fit in the post. Yeah. Wanky, annoying, nasal, drugged up sponge bath. <laughs> there you go, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> There you go. Not one of my best, but I'll uh, I'll stand by I my I stand well. by my review. <laughs> <laughs> you did well. And if anyone else has any um, one sentence reviews they want me to have a crack at, um, actually, I've just thought of a couple myself. But, uh, uh, you really? Yes. I <laughs> then email them into Darren's brain. <laughs> at vacant at gmail dot com. Oh, you're so funny. <laughs> Space to let. Um, but anyway, or send them into blackdog at geekplanetonline dot com, or um, or DM them to Darren over Facebook if you're friends yeah. with him. Um, just remember, if you send it to me, send it to the Geek Planet Online email that you must put in about four million asterisks so I don't see it in the preview. Right, well, there you go. Profanosaurus, one sentence review all out the way. Let's get on with some roasting specs for Jason and the Argonauts. (laughs) 
think back to the films you remember as good Ones you haven't viewed in a while How the story rocked and the actors were great The camera work had flair and style What would happen now if you watch them today? Are they still as fresh as before? Or do they stink as bad as a piss-covered tramp Leave you screaming on the floor? You know it can be real sad Find that special film is bad Wish you just left it a pleasant memory Now it's time for rose tint specs on black dome Watching movies from the past you thought were great Yes, it's time for rose tint specs on black dome Send your feedback in and tell us how they breathe. <laughs> Right, okay, so Jason and the Argonauts, a 1963 film directed by Don Chaffee, uh, produced by uh, Charles H. Schneier. Schneier? Schneier. Schneier. There you go. Um, by the way, I would just like to preface all of this by saying even though we're doing this to uh, sem- celebrate Ray Harryhausen, you would be better off and better served by listening to <laughs> Hypnobobs, the latest episode, because it's yeah. a damn sight more comprehensive and <laughs> reverent to the, to, the, to the matter at hand. This is a complete shambles. <laughs> this is going to be the anti-Hypnobobs, and basically we're, the only information you're going to glean from us is as much as I can get on Wiki and IMDb in the time available. Hmm. There you go. I, I did save some things back. Oh, you good man. <laughs> oh, shit, you should have told me that before I pulled back the curtain. <laughs> anyway, um, written by Beverly Cross, starring Todd Armstrong, who was um, voiced by someone completely different. Tim Turner, I think he was voiced by. Who was? The, the hero? Yeah, Jason. Christ. Mm. Jason with his yeah. voice. Yeah. Um, we used to do that a lot back in the day, though. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it was quite, it was quite, quite common practice to be voice actors. Of, uh, you look good, but <laughs> <laughs> you look good, but you sound like a smurf in a hyperbaric chamber. Um, <laughs> anyway, um, also starring Nancy Kovac, who was um, also dubbed over with by Ho- Honor Blackman, who stars in this film. Wow! There you go. So there you go. A little bit of trivia that I did have in my head. Um, yeah, starring on a Blackman as well, uh, music by Bernard Herman, and uh, obviously effects and produced by Ray Harry uh, Ray Harryhausen. Um, it had a budget of one million dollars, and it earned on on the time of release, uh, adjusted for money money for time now, uh, two point one million dollars in the U.S. and Canada alone. Um, it was released June 19th, 1963, and ran to 104 minutes. Um, there is not an awful lot about this at all. However, Harry Harryhausen was quoted as saying is it, it was his favourite film that he ever did. And um, the um, sequence with the, with the skeletons, the seven skeletons against three actors, um, was an effects achievement done only by Harryhausen himself. He was the only person working on these films. It took him four months to do that sequence. Gosh. Which which lasts for probably about three minutes. Yeah. Tops, possibly four. Um, Yes, he said in an interview mm. um, around the time of uh, Sinbad and the Eye of the Tiger Mm. that he had seven skeletons, each had five appendages. (laughs) (laughs) Um, with 10 people in the battle scene, mm. and he was only getting an average of 13 or 14 frames a day, oh. which, which, um, for those of you who don't know, mm. one second of film is 24 frames. Yes, that is, that is painful. I mean, you know, but then, then looking, at, looking at animation today, even with all the computers and the technology and everything, are basically going really well is basically producing a minute of footage. Um, so it hasn't really progress- progressed that no. much. Mm. I mean, you know, one man, one man, seven characters and 14 frames is basically pretty damn good going. Oh, I um, but anyway, um, yeah, so it took him, you know, you know, 
took him about took him about four months to make that. Um, <laughs> the, after Sergio Leone actually released a film called The Colossus of Rhodes, um, the Colossus of Rhodes um, was renamed in the script in a hurry to Talos, the Living Bronze Giant. <laughs> <laughs> um, and um, yes, in order to uh, where are we? There's something else I was going to say. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, I said Tim Turner. Yeah. Tim Turner was actually the voice of the Invisible Man in the um, in the nineteen nineteen fifties British TV adaptation. Oh wow! Yeah. Uh, that's where I know the name from. That's it. And um, oh, and the other famous story that comes out of it was that um, when they were filming with the Argo in the bay, f- swimming in. Yeah. They actually o- overlapped with um, they overlapped with another production that was on the other side of the island about Sir Francis Drake, and apparently <laughs> um, one one day of filming, particularly arduous filming, was completely ruined by the fact that as the Argo was sailing into a supposedly empty bay, yeah, um, the Golden Hind was seen coming <laughs> the other way. <one. laughs> yeah, oh, that's a missed opportunity. It could have been that uh, Apocalypse Now moment, you know, with or. Yeah. Uh, hot shots. We had Charlie Sheen yeah. on one boat. Yeah, and uh, his name? <laughs> loved Dad you on Wall Street. <laughs> yeah, no, but apparently um, that was in Hot Shots, wasn't it? Yeah, Hot yeah. Shots. Yeah, but then apparently producer Charles H. Schneer shouted, "Get that fucking ship out of here! You're in the wrong century." <laughs> um, <laughs> 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 mm. um, also, um, due to budgetary constraints and time constraints uh, and on Harry Housen's own time, um, it was it's alluded to in the um, in the final film. But you know the 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 what's her name the the lady the uh, oh God I only watched it today. What, Medea. Medea, that's it. Mm. She basically um, she's praying to her gods, which yeah. just happened to be a three headed dog. The three-headed dog Cerebus was actually supposed to appear in the film. Oh right! Um, but Harryhausen and and Sneer basically turned around and went, "No, we haven't got the time," <laughs> and that oh. and that kind of got and it got swapped out for the Hydra. Right. So there you go. Um, and that's something I know that Harryhausen did regret mm. because Cerebus only had three heads. The Hydra had seven. <laughs> and and Ray, you always should tell a famous famous story saying the trouble with doing the Hydra was if someone distracted him while he was doing, he'd be losing track of which head was going which in which direction. Oh man. Oh Jesus. That's, see you see that did that does seem like that does seem like a bit of a false economy. I know what we'll do. We'll get rid of we'll get rid of a hairy dog with three heads because we don't want to animate hair. But what we will do is replace it with a seven headed snake carrying a bloke in its tail. <laughs> That's like about what, <laughs> that's about four million limbs in total. You know? <coughs> nice, great, great work there. That's that's good planning. Um, to be quite honest, after that, it all kind of vague, talks about the vaguely about the um, score, the Bernard Herrmann score, mm. um, which really is you know reused elements from other other soundtracks. So I will just have to stop it there, unfortunately, and and rely on Jim's. Um, hypno Bob's off off cuts to, <laughs> to pull us through in the um, in the uh, sort of <laughs> Ray Harryhausen <laughs> tribute area of the uh, podcast. So um, let's get going. Uh, so Jim, watching it again, what did you think of it? Um, well, it's one of those. It's it's a film I always enjoy. Um, as I recounted on Hypno Bob's, now we'll recap here. Hmm. Um, Please, this this was the first. <laughs> Harryhausen film I ever was exposed to. I remember being very, very young, probably only two or three, mm. um, being at uh, my nana's house um, as she was babysitting me and putting on the TV and seeing the scene with Talos. Mm. And that just blew me away. I mean, as it would, <laughs> you know, it's yeah. kind of giant bronze statue and doing the heel, lava flowing out. Unbelievable. And for years, I hadn't a clue, obviously, what this film was. I, I mean, that's the only thing I remember. I assume that, obviously, my parents had turned up and took me away before I could see anything else. <laughs> because, obviously, if I'd seen the rest, I'd be remembering 
like the skeleton fight in the Hydra. Mm. Yeah. Um, and so it wasn't until quite a few years later that I could, you know, identify what the film was. And, you know, by that stage, I was aware of Ray Harryhausen. And, you know, mm. it's kind of I had this um, Sinbad and the Eye of the Tiger tie in magazine oh, yeah. done by the people at House of Hammer. And that had this big art, big article um, about, you know, the amazing world of Dinorama. Mm. And, and this was my Bible for years because mm. this listed all his films. I mean, there was only, you know, he did one after Sinbad and the Eye of the Tiger. Mm. And it was kind of, you know, I was scouring TV schedules for, you know, any showing of any of the films mentioned in here. <laughs> Um, you know, when I did finally see Jason, I, you know, I was familiar with the legend. And although even at that young age was a fanboy gene going, the Hydra was in Hercules, not in Jason. <laughs> but when you see it, it's just such an amazing creature. Hmm. Um, it's just, you think, oh, fuck it. I don't care. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> um, and it's one of those, I mean, the thing with, I think Jason the Argonaut is probably the best film he did. It's, yeah. it's one where, I mean, as I remember um, a review in actually House of Hammer, I think it was, said when they reviewed Sinbad and the Eye of the Tiger, they said, it's a shame Harry Harryhausen can't do the humans as well. <laughs> 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 um, which is it's a fair point, I think. Yeah. <laughs> um, we're, but we're in this one. I mean, it plays out like the old classic Hollywood biblical epics, mm. which is exa- it's hitting exactly the right tone for the subject matter. Um I mean, Niall McGuinness um, is, you know, and uh, Honor Blackman and hmm. uh, Zeus and Hera are just, wo- it's a wonderful framing device for the story. Hmm. It's, re- it's really, it's a really clever idea. It's really charming. And I mean, I know the matting effects are showing their age now. And particularly on the DVD version, look awful. Hmm. They look better on the Blu-ray because, I mean, I watched, I watched it twice. I watched it on my DVD and I saw it. It's on Love Film on streaming, yeah. and that's yeah, from that's the Blu-ray. That's from the Blu-ray print, and that is far superior to the DVD print. Mm. Um, and you just look at it now, and it's kind of the de- the detail in his animation is incredible. Well, I mean, what struck me this time is, I mean, this time I actually spotted what it mentions on the wiki that if you look on the skeleton shields, mm. there's homages to his previous creations. Yeah. There's an octopus, there's the crack, there's the Ymir's head. That's right. And, and stuff in, like that. And in fact, the one right at the back, <clears throat> bizarrely, and maybe because he already knew what he was doing, but um, the one right at the back is the Medusa. The last oh. one. I noticed that. Yeah. Yeah. What you're um, saying about detail in the animation, mm. um, there is a bit with, I noticed with Talos. Um, is the fact that when he's just about to go and do something, you see him throw the sword into the other hand. Yeah. And mm-hmm. it's like, that's brilliant. Little throwaway yeah, animation little, tricks. Just a little thing. Mm-hmm. And he does that a couple of times so he's yeah. got the hand free to do what needs to be done. Yeah. Though um, I, w- I will be honest with you and say that the first time when I was watching it, I kind of fell asleep. Um, and it's not not a... You know, nothing about the quality of the film. It's just about the state of my own pers- person. Um <laughs> The f- I, I kind of nodded off and then I woke back up on the talus bit and as he's walking round the corner the first time you see him and he yeah. walks round from behind that cliff I genuinely thought that sword was his cock <laughs> <laughs> I thought hang about what the fuck am I looking at hold on what 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 have I have I downloaded weapon. have I downloaded the wrong version yeah. um, but anyway that's that's my bleary eyed it's half asleep mm. mental state at that time. But anyway. But yeah, I mean, so if you look, like, what struck me this time, particularly watching the skeleton fight, mm. um, it's just the body language of the skeleton. So even the ones in the background mm. are always they're reacting and doing something. There's a wonderful scene where, where one stabs one of Jason's comrades, mm. and there's one following up behind him, and he's sort of hanging back looking... And you can see this. You can see the thought processes in the skeleton warrior's mind. Going, do I need to stab this cunt as well? No, no, he's down. <laughs> yeah, he looks down. No, yes, he, yeah, he's definitely down. Yeah. Right, where's where's the rest of the bastards? That's and it. the runs off. Yeah, and it's just it's just so well thought out and choreographed. Um, I mean, I know for that scene, they they how they shot it was they had they trained all the actors in sword fighting. Mm. And then they had stuntmen come in, and they rehearsed it and rehearsed it and rehearsed it. Then the final take, because um, it was all every blow in that is worked out in advance. Mm. 
they all then for the last take the stuntmen left and just left the actors who could then now like a ballet just do every stroke hmm. so it matches just so perfectly with the actual skeletons when they're put in like a year later yeah uh, um, because I was going to say, because the one thing I noticed this time around, when I finally did stay awake and watch the whole thing, I, I have to say the thing I really appreciated this time was with with a lot of those stop frame animation things, there's always this whole thing to save on time. What they do is they film the point of view from the monster and you just see a guy kind of waving a sword at the camera <sighs> nine times mm-hmm. out of ten yeah. and you never see connection between the character and the thing. And what I really appreciated is there's one move where basically Jason basically knocks one of them out or punches one in the face and the camera pans back or comes back to an, a wide shot and you see that one who's just been punched in the face actually hit the ground while he's, while Jason carries on fighting another guy and it kind of gets up and it shakes its head and it's like... Oh, you got to appreciate some a little, you know, there's a, there's a little bit of me that just had a little kind of, oh, that's so cute. That's so cool. The, you know, you didn't, you know, it's, it, the thing is, and you know, it's, it's literally, it's off, it's almost off camera. It's like sort of, you know, mm, yeah. just off, of, off of center. So basically you're not really even looking at it. But the fact that they, t- you know, Harryhausen took that time to have him, the thing literally push itself back up on its on its haunches and give its head a little shake is kind of like a beautiful little touch. It's nice yeah. and kind of runs all the way through it. But go and carry on, Jim. Sorry, I'll... I mean, I mean, there's another bit on the same theme where one where they're fighting and it slashes him, so he drops his shield. Yeah, and you've got that real connection between the animation and the character, which mm. is just like. Fucking hell, that's so well done. Mm. You know what I mean? It, I mean, let's face it. At the time, and even now, if people were using the same techniques, mm. they would actually shy away from doing such a sequence. Well, They'd go, no, it, no, fucking, it, it'll be too much of a headache. He'll, he'll, you know. Well, exactly. But Harry Housen goes for it, and then he does it in just such full of these little touches that are just so beautiful, and just mm. it's like. Wow. <laughs> and this is one, I mean, you know, he was one guy in a shed. You know, he lived in London because he always wanted to live in Europe. Mm. You know, the producer, Charles Schneer, actually used to live next door to him for years. <laughs> you know, this was very much to draw a weird parallel. It's like uh, Oliver Postgate and Peter Furman. Mm. It's that kind of, you know, they'd. Yeah. you know, thrash out an idea for a story. Ray would do these wonderful storyboards. Mm then Charlie would go and take them round and hawk them and say, give us money. Yeah. And, you know, one thing the studios always knew, that Harry Housen would deliver on what was on his storyboards. <laughs> yeah, never never put anything in that you couldn't actually make yourself. Mm. Um, and Because you'd be the only bastard making it. But, I tell you, <laughs> <laughs> but then uh, the other thing, he's just talking about the connection, because um, obviously we'll, we'll get around to the film in a second, but... The, even to this day, I mean, I saw a couple of weeks back, uh, we got Walking with Dinosaurs on, on Blu-ray. Mm. And um, the one thing that always strikes me with all the stuff that Framestore did with that stuff, which was obviously revolutionary for TV and the CG and the other, but there's a, se- there's a whole thing about the Tyrannosaurs and the Tyrannosaurs attacking each other and all this kind of stuff. And all it is is shots from a distance. You, never, you see them barking at each other. You never see them connect. Mm. And you suddenly go, why is that? Because it'd take too long to fucking render. Mm. So what we'll do is yeah. we'll have them roar at each other, then we'll have a cutaway to like one coming at you, and then next one's dead on the ground. It's like, mm. you cheating bastards. <laughs> you know. And it's you know, and then when you see that, you know, with like modern day technology, okay, even by CG standards it's now a little dated, but it's like even with modern technology, people try and shy away from interacting directly with between effects and and the, yeah. and, mm. and another effect done in a completely separate studio, and so it's like, you know, to do that on your own with a piece of video, you know, film, it's just like mm. back in the sixties, you know, fifties, you know, it's just like that's incredible, mm. incredible work. Well, it's one that he was very, he obviously wanted to work in color, but he was very wary of it because he knew how much work it was going to make because mm. you've got to manage the color, the color palette. Yeah, <clears throat> and he actually he used to sleep in the studio to maintain mm. the lights, so there were always it was always match exactly. <laughs> I mean that's <laughs> dedication. Yeah, and then and then he would go to sleep for a month 
<laughs> afterwards. <laughs> well, it's, I was, well, the thing is, in, in the 60s, he was like, you know, on to the next one, because with all these films, it was always kind of, he was storyboarding one. Hmm. They were doing the live action filming for another. Hmm. And then he was working on the effects of yet another. And they had this sort of rolling production. Hmm. Um, it's kind of, it's incredible what, you know, because he wasn't just doing the stop motion, which is time right. consuming. He was doing all the other effects as well. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Which yeah, is kind all of the like, optical stuff. Yeah. I mean, he was he was very dismissive of modern movies with crews for 100, going, what a waste of money. <laughs> you know <laughs> what I mean? You idiots, amateurs, yeah. you know. And, and, you know, he's totally entitled to that because, you know, he can yeah. walk the walk and he can talk the talk. Well, exactly. One man does does 25 people's jobs. I mean, mm. done that. Yeah, done that. Real. Yeah, I can color grade. I can do negatives. I can optical expose. I can you know, I can do this, that, and the other. It's like fucking hell. Yeah, mm. but I tell you what, his tea was shit. <laughs> 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 but anyway, just just moving away from Harryhausen himself for a second. What did you actually think of the film going around this time, Jim? Was it was it a good watch for you? Or oh, it was. It's just it's such a charming film. It's just so well told. I mean. You know, let's be honest, other Harryhausen films mm. aren't as well constructed no. as this one. Um, I mean, this is, I think it's, I think it's probably the longest film he actually did, because it's about one hour 50, mm. uh, where some are more like one hour 20, you know, mm. one hour 30. Yeah. However, you know, but they said him and Schneer had got um, a four picture deal from Columbia, mm. and the first one was Seven Foids of Sinbad, then Mysterious Island, Three Wheels of Gulliver. Uh, however, this one was the one that went out as an A picture. It didn't mm. go out as part of a double bill, which is probably why it's kind of yeah the biggest budget and it's the longest. Mm. And I think this is, this is one. It's where everything came together: the storyline, he had a good cast, mm. good director, brilliant mm. score, mm. and it all just works perfectly. Mm. Excellent, and you and nothing stands out to you. Nothing. Well, I have one big quibble with the film. Yeah. That there was never a sequel of The Twelve Labours of Hercules. Because, <laughs> I, I mean, I was yeah. a big... I was really... If you ask me for my, you know, my favourite mm. um, like Greek myth, it was The Twelve Labours of Hercules. Yeah. And I thought kind of the Hercules they had in this film was spot-on perfect. Yeah. Kind of this big, super strong man who's kind of a bit Falstaff as well, blustering yeah. and... And I'd have loved to see him do a sequel to this with that Hercules there in the Arkonauts and tell mm. the story of the Twelve Labours. That that would have been great. Yeah, because I mean the way this is the way this uh, this film ends, I just expected it to have like an airplane esque kind of finale scene after the credits roll of him still wandering around the beach, going, <laughs> "Hello, Hylas, Hylas, Hylas. <laughs> where are you?" Walking past Talos's crushed body and all the blood running out from underneath it. Hello, Hylas. Are you there? <laughs> Hello? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, okay. Well, moving on. Darren, what did you think of it this time round? What do I think of it this time round? Yeah. Um, I, I I like Jason and the Argonauts. It's mm. not my um, it's not my de facto sort of Harry Harryhausen film. It's, what one's that? Just out that's, of that's Eye of the Tiger. All um, oh, right. Uh, basically because I remember going to see that at the cinema with my dad. Mm. Um, so it's one of those sort of like special sort of like cinema trips between us. Yeah. That's it, you know, down to the Stratford cinema, going yeah. to see that. Um, uh, that was... And Naked Jane Seymour. Naked Jane Seymour. I don't remember that for it to tell you, you the need, truth. You need to revisit it. Yes. Yeah, I know. Really seen of her back. sat by a pool. Yeah. Wearing yeah. nothing but her long yeah. hair. I w- hold on, hold on a sec. There will now be a short intermission. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, seriously, if you put Sinbad of the Iron Tiger into Google Images, you'll get you'll get a still from that very well, quickly. And so you. to the Googly Mobile. <laughs> yes. Well, well. At this point in time, you carry on talking. But anyway, yes. I'm not ignoring <laughs> you. I'm just going on my iPad for no discernible yeah. reason. My my most. <laughs> My most, the strongest memory whenever anybody ever says Jason and the Argonauts yeah. to me is Talos. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. And it's the whole opening the ankle and the fluid of life flowing out of it. Yeah. And, you know, that sort of thing. So Talos to me is the, the, the one thing I automatically think of where this film is concerned. Mm. Um, is it any good? Uh, yeah, I think it is. Mm. Um, it's, 
it shows i don't know which came first i think it was it was definitely this actually yeah it was um this came before clash of the titans oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah that's right yeah and you can you can see in the quality of film mm. um it's different I think this is a it's a better put together film. It's better acted. I'm just going to distract mm. Darren for one second. <laughs> oh, right, that picture. Yes, there we go. <laughs> it's you know, Doctor you... Quinn, medicine woman in the buff. Doctor Quinn, medicine <laughs> woman. Mm. But uh, anyway, now yes, you carry on. To this. You carry on talking. I'll just so, carry on looking. Uh, yeah, you know, it's it's a, it's a fun film. It's uh, you know, it doesn't disappoint. I don't think. Um, I, don't, I think even kids of today would get this one. You know, I really mm, do. Definitely, like, yeah. Sit down and watch it with some small mm. children. I think they uh, they lap it up. It's brilliant. Really good. <laughs> well, if I can just interject with a an irrelevant anecdote. <laughs> yes, go ahead. Um, That's what we're <clears> all <throat> about, Jim. There, there's there's a magic to Harryhausen um, that in these days of CGI, it's easy to forget. Um, now, a couple of weeks ago, I was at my dad's for mm. Sunday dinner, mm-hmm. and my sister was there. And, you know, she, my niece, she's only two. Hmm. And she was doing what two-year-olds do in an unfamiliar house, which is run riot. Yeah, running up and down, everything. touching everything she shouldn't. <laughs> um, and my dad, he's like, you know, he's an inveterate channel flicker. And he was hmm. flicking through channels looking for something to, something to watch. And Clash of the Titans was on. Hmm. And Jessica was running about. And he flicked over and it was just towards the end. Um, and she wasn't paying any attention. Then the Kraken appeared, mm. and she suddenly just stopped, sat down in front of the TV, which, I mean, Jessica is always on the go. She never stops, she, you know. <laughs> and she sat down, and she watched that whole end sequence absolutely spellbound. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's, that's, that's good, because that's, that's probably the only bit I wish I'd only watched. <laughs> 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 after the lo- after the last time we watched it, I was like, let's just skip to the fucking Kraken. Yeah. <laughs> but um, so yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> sorry, Jason the Argonauts. Yep, yeah, I I, it's, I like the film. Mm. You know, say so it's not my my favourite of his, but um, yeah, it's still very good. Yeah, okay, that's fair enough. Um, for me, and like I say, I preface all of this by saying I watched it three times half asleep <laughs> in various bits and in today managed to watch all of it there's there's a couple of th- i i mean firstly i appreciate the the artistry that goes into this i mean i think i said it on your on feedback to mm. to you jim i mean uh to hypnobobs that basically sorry i'm gonna leave this with darren because that'll keep him awake <laughs> um <laughs> you carry on yeah you just you just carry on thumbing through some jane seymour um that basically one of the things that I really appreciate with it this time around is that, and one of the things when I when I was at Elstree, um, as and and it came back to me when I said it in in the Hypnobob's feedback, was that someone told me that the best way to appreciate a special effect and see where it works is to turn all the sound off, and. In fact, when people look at showreels nowadays, they turn the sound off. So putting all your music and your fucking video cuts and everything is for nothing because most of the time they turn the sound off because the sound does half the work for you. And with with a lot of Harryhausen's creations, they work without the sound. And <laughs> I don't know, maybe Darren doesn't remember this. Maybe I can't remember if, if you remember this. Do you remember my dad having a Super 8 projector? Um, do you remember that no. or was was that just before your time when we used to show time. we used to show stuff on a bed sheet no projector no okay well as a as a recounted to jim um basically what happened was my dad got this super eight projector and we used to have this sort of you know bed sheet and everything yeah and it had a little show reel that came with it like a demo reel it was on a little red reel and it was all Harryhausen stuff. Oh wow! And so you know, but but it had no. But Dad hadn't invested in any speakers. <laughs> didn't realise that the fucking projector <laughs> needed speakers to fucking work. So we'd be watching this stuff, and it'd all be in perfect silence. And there was the Carly bit from is it the Golden Voyager Sinbad, isn't it? Yes. Yes. Yeah. You know, have you, do you remember that with the yeah. Carly statue, and it comes to life, and then it's like got eight arms, and it's 
beating away Sinbad's men and all this sort of yeah. thing. I think that's is that the one and, and that's the one with the um with the wizard with the golden face, a bit like um That's the Grand Vizier who's been scarred and he has a golden right. mask like that's Cletus right. in Flash Gold. Yeah, like Cle- yeah. yeah. Cletus I'm bored. <laughs> but then <laughs> turn up in that uh Orlando Bloom film. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what, what Kingdom of Heaven. <laughs> yeah, Kingdom of Heaven. That's but it. anyway, um so so but I was watching that and it'd be all in you know, be completely silent and except for when my dad come in and he'd be doing things like my putting voices over the top of <laughs> Carly, like, get off my lawn, get out of my ass, fuck off, <laughs> fuck off, out of it, get out of it. <laughs> you can't, <laughs> which is, you know, quite cool, but you know, you kind of appreciate when your old man's not in the house and, and he's not making those noises, how much artistry goes into that stuff. Now, this time around, watching Jason and the Argonauts. You know, like I said, I saw all those bit little extra bits with, you know, with the, uh, you know, with the skeletons and stuff. But also little little touches with things like Talos when he falls apart, and he cracks, and those little cracks all appear really carefully and really subtly, mm. and you suddenly think, hold on, Harryhausen couldn't have just projected those over which is what i would do now i just get after effects and draw some fucking cracks appearing and then stick it over the top he actually had to put those cracks in he actually had Mm. to physically have those things happen to that model which presumably had to be one of many otherwise doing it wrong would have meant oh fuck that's the last (laughs) shot of the that's the last shot that's it talus is broken let's fuck off and go home Uh, (laughs) referring back to the jack d d i watched it (laughs) as long as you know he was very (laughs) very unsentimental about his models Mm. um the 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 trog in sinbad of the tiger Mm. was made from cannibalized bits Mm. from um the centaur in um, one of the sinbad films the yeah, uh, was, yeah, and likewise, was Medu- was Medusa hmm. was re- was recycled from using the armature of the Snake Woman in Seven Voyages of Sinbad. Ah. <laughs> he used to reuse his bits, all you know, all the time. I mean, mm. um, yeah, you know, I've got a good armature there. Fuck it, get it out. Fuck it. Yeah. <laughs> well, I was going to say the the, the the face of the Kraken reminds me a bit of the um, the Ymir of. Um, what was it twenty million miles worth? Yeah, well, that, that was a deliberate touch on his part. Um, yeah. there, there's test footage online of mm. something he did when he was very young for because um, he always wanted to do World's the War of the Worlds. Mm. And if you go to YouTube, you can see test footage he shot of um, a Martian coming out of its cylinder mm. for what would have been the end of War of the Worlds, where it's dying of the flu. Mm. And that has the same. Um, Kind of, you know, that sort of that sort of beardy fins that the Ymir mm. and the Kraken has. Ah, nice, mm. cool. Ah, well, um, I've kind of lost track now because I'm suddenly thinking, oh, I should look that up. Well, Just I'm... one thing, yeah. Um, I, I think Harry Hauser must have been a, a bit of a Patrick Troughton fan because he appears in two of his movies. Mm. Yeah, um, he's also in Sinbad and the Eye of the Tiger. Ah. Yeah, I mean, I. I I rewatched Sinbad and the Eye of the Tiger because, well, like yourself, Darren, I have that was one of the first films I saw a trailer on the TV yeah. and I pestered my dad to go and see. Mm. Yeah, you know that kind of it's one of those kind of not much discussed but important parts of your childhood. I think so, <laughs> yeah. where, you, where you go from being taken to see films to start yeah. pestering your dad to take you to see films. <laughs> nice. And then, of course, it and goes like, full circle many, many, many. Yeah, years exactly. You, 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 you know, I and recommend you're taking I, them. I mean, I recommended Iron Man 3 to my dad <laughs> to go and see, you know what I mean? He came back going, oh, that was really good. I really enjoyed that. Do, mm. do you know about um, kind of just kind of going on the same subject of taking parents to, you know, going full circle with this? <laughs> this, is turning, this is turning into Tangent Alley now, it but go on, alley. carry on. Yeah. Um, my dad took me to see... Star mm. Wars when it originally came out, mm-hmm. and then when they got re-released about ten years ago, I actually took him. So <laughs> yeah. that's nice. kind of a nice mm. full circle, you know, closure thing going on there. So, yeah, uh, mm. yeah. I whereas whereas I I said to dad, my dad, um, the last <laughs> time I took him to see anything um, was Jurassic Park, 
And I said, oh, you should go and see Jurassic Park. And he's like, oh, well, I'm going to the cinema. I said, yes, you will. You, you, you'll you enjoy this. It's got amazing effects. It's Steven Spielberg. You know, I know you like some of his films. Yep. So give it a try. And and he said, haven't you fucking got into porno yet? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, yeah, you, I think he already knew <laughs> I, was, I was into that. Uh, I, I, that's, a, that's a story for a different time when we review Deep Throat. Yeah, we, um, we won't mention the <laughs> Robocop style videotape recorder. Oh, oh God, no. <laughs> or the land oh, of the job. Ed, Ed 209, Ed that's 209. it. The Ed 209 yeah. video recorder. Yeah. <laughs> okay, now we are going off on a tangent. But basically, we, we had, I, had, I had managed to find. Now this is a bit. This is really tangent alley, but I managed to find a porn <laughs> tape, didn't I? Down a VHS one, and and we had basically. I was in the bedroom next door to my parents' house, and my bed, late my at parents' night. bedroom, and late at night. And there's Darren here, and he's and we've been playing on like snares or oh, whatever. No, I don't it was. think I was there at the times. You te- you were telling me about this. Oh, that's, that's right. Yeah, that's you were right. by yourself. Sorry, you snuck yeah. in. I snuck in. I snuck in. I got the tape. I've taken it back to the bedroom. I thought, this is great. Got the lights off. I'm all ready. All right, okay. First bit of legitimate video <laughs> porn. And I turned on my VHS player. And I tell you what, I've never realised quite how loud they are. Because it went... Because it went... <laughs> and that fucking, like... 12 o'clock Please at night. Down your weapon. <laughs> exactly. It's like 11 o'clock at night when you think your parents have only just gone to sleep and you've just got away with it. It's going... <laughs> and the buttons are going... <laughs> Was it a top loader? Yeah. <laughs> Motherfucker. So you had to jump off your bed onto it to shut yeah. it as well. I literally, I was literally, I was like that. I was like Chief from One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. I was smothering it with my pillow while it fucking loaded up this tape. <laughs> it's like, shut up, you cunt. Anyway. Who turned, who turned up the video recorder? <laughs> exactly. Sorry, I just switched on the ele- elephant alarm. I mean, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> or like the or like the time when I, I that one I definitely told I'm sure I have now we are going off on a tangent then when I when I used to we used to swap games yes on on the on the Commodore Amiga yes we used to be into the swapping scene you used to be able to look in the back of a magazine and there'd be people who were offering to swap games and so you would sort of put games in a jiffy bag you'd send them off and it'd be like a sort of surprise package would turn up with another bunch of games and sort of 10 o'clock on a saturday morning this parcel's turned up my first ever parcel i've run upstairs turned on the uh, turned on the amiga it sat there i put this disc in didn't have a label on it stuck the disc in it went now my mum and dad are just down the hall they are ha- you know having a lie in and all of a sudden it goes I'm like wow this music's not bad you know fucking Amiga give it some so I started turning it up a little bit then all of a sudden it goes quiet stops loading it goes welcome to strip poker 3 I'm like I couldn't I almost threw the fucking thing out of the window (laughs) and my dad comes in sort of like in his dressing gown scratching his head going what was that nothing dad nothing nothing just just there's nothing go go back to bed then i turned the volume down and put the disc back in oh yeah yeah. couldn't play poker lost all my money didn't see a fucking thing anyway (laughs) on away from that tangent (laughs) away from that tangent um before i tell my 10 anecdote come on (laughs) (laughs) oh bo derek where were you um Everyone remembers where they were when they saw Bo Derek. Anyway, I don't know where I was now. Jason the Argonauts. Yes. So I so I really appreciated the effects this time. I really appreciated that. But then there was a couple of bits where I thought it just like reality hits you in the face. One of them was the entire nation of badly drawn boy with the, with their tea cozies <laughs> on their heads. Oh, them. <laughs> which which put me off a little bit. I just felt I just felt like like I just I just sort of witnessed the birth of a nation based around the Wurzels. Um it's the hipster hipster uh, <laughs> hipster island that was. 
<laughs> Laura actually wants one of those hats. What? It looks it looks like an inverted nipple on their head made out of wool. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but, but in fairness, you know, that, that Jane knitted woolly hat is inexplicably popular in fandom. <laughs> yeah. The Jane Kiss is the place to be if you're a Firefly <laughs> fan. <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> This year at Colchis Con, <laughs> yeah, we're going to do Firefly again. Oh, um, but the other thing that got me was <laughs> was the, the the one thing that slapped me right in the face just as the credits rolled. Yeah, was firstly Jason never really triumphs over the king. You never see no, that. Oh, that's true, actually. He never does. He, ne- he never goes back and goes, fuck you. Yeah, he's got, I've got the golden, golden fleece. Golden bling. Yeah, there fuck you go. Fuck you. Exactly. Was yeah. he, and, and secondly, even if he does, even if he does manage to sort of go back, how does he get through those crashing rocks now that he's thrown his one Neptune attempt away? Shut up, that's why. Oh, right, okay. Well, in fairness, that is in the original myth. He never explains how he gets back. He just returns and takes over. Okay, okay, yeah. fair enough. Because he, ta- he takes the easy way back. That he didn't know about <laughs> take, on the way he there. takes the slow boat home. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's like going to America. You know, it's always an hour shorter. On the uh, like that. Yeah, one <laughs> using the trade winds, nice. <laughs> um, but yeah, so there was there was a couple of things like that, and also the the bit when it's like we can't go in and get the golden fleece. Because if we go and get the Golden Fleece, we'll be going up against the whole nation. The whole nation will fucking have us. Okay, right, fine. They go there, try to nick the Golden Fleece, and what does what does Woolly Hat Prime say? <laughs> what does he do? He goes, I know what I'll do. I'll let you have seven of my skeletons mm. against you. He's like, hold on, you've got an entire cocking nation behind you. Like, yeah. a million men... Brave and true, which he already says he's going to stab you with, but we have to have seven skeletons. Or we can have seven skeletons. But apart from that, I mean, the skeleton sequence was very good. And it's, but, but they well, no, all... no, no, in, in fairness, I mean, it did, it did play out of kind of, you'll never get the Golden Fleece, we've got the Hydra. And then Jason's betrayed by his shipmate, who tries to get the Golden Fleece mm. and gets fucked over. And Jason goes, well, I feel like difficult. <laughs> Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll have that. I'll have that away. <laughs> I'm off. There's me always toes. one dodgy Greek in every species. And oh. This one is fucking me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, but then you Jason know, the Greek. I, mean, bit woo, I can bit I can understand the kids thinking. Mm. I've got Scotland warriors. Warriors who can't die. They'll make mincemeat of these fucking chances. Yeah. Oh, oh shit. Oh shit. They can't, oh shit. They can't swim. <laughs> Bollocks. <laughs> Yeah, a fatal flaw <laughs> as they sink to the bottom of the ocean. Yeah, it's full of holes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, you have no you have no fat on your body, which allows for flotation. You shall sink. Um, yeah, so there was. I found. I think I found the. I think it all comes down to the back. The fact that I found the last act a little bit abrupt after it seemed to take its take its merry time to get to to the to the golden fleece. You know with. You know Hercules and and all that kind of stuff, and that was good. I don't get me wrong; I enjoyed it, but it just seemed like it went. We got the Golden Fleece. The end. It was like da 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 da. da. <laughs> hey, hey. <laughs> and it was like, oh, oh, okay. So, so he's not going back to fulfil his destiny, take over from the king, because no. he just seemed. Well, like, that, that, that is sort of a fair point. Because I, I, I mean, I would say about this movie that, mm. I mean, as I said, it plays out like a biblical epic. Mm. Um, but it does have the curse of the age of cinema's past mm. in the fact that the first reel is entire setup. Mm. Now, I know for modern viewers, we want something to explode and jizz in our faces straight away. Yeah, unless, of course, you're smothering the VHS in case you want it just to stop loading. <laughs> well, well, yeah. <laughs> or, or, or unless you've you know, rigged up your portable television so that if you just flick the switch, the plug, it the, the viewing of 10 disappears and your dad doesn't catch you. Um, but, <laughs> and there he lies a story. <laughs> Indeed. Hypnobobs, the unseen years. <laughs> um, but, you know, it does, the thing with Jason, the, the first half an hour is setting up the story. Hmm. Um, but once it gets 
past that first half an hour, you're never more than 10 minutes away from some insane monster mm. and some wonder of stop animation yeah. doing mm. its stuff. And then at the end, it is kind of... I mean, the thing is, the Greek myth, the, the Greek myth does end like, you get to go on the relation, la, 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 happily ever after. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, I can see that for a modern, impatient, MTV-sated short attention band motherfucker that could be a problem what are you saying what are you saying jim <laughs> are you, is that me <laughs> what the fuck are you just calling me you just insulting me jim <laughs> oh you're yes. having we are be having a problem with well, no, it's just one of the, I, I, I think to be honest yeah schneer and harry hausen being mm. quite well-rounded storytellers mm. they probably would have had a glorious return sequence. Mm. But the film had already clocked in at an hour and 50, and Columbia said, that's your lot, lad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Um, yeah. You're good, but you're not Ben-Hur. We're not, we're not, we're not signing off on the three-hour for this. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, um, overall, overall, just getting it back on track, away from <laughs> various porn stories and... You know, par- <laughs> parents in cinemas. Oh, no, no, that's what I was going to say. Jurassic Park. The thing was, I took Dad to Jurassic, Jurassic Park. He went to see it. After all that, I kind of got distracted. Yeah. And you know what he said? He came out and said, What? Too fucking loud, weren't it? And he just walked <laughs> off. <laughs> that was it. That was his complete one sentence review of Jurassic Park. Too, Too fucking, fucking loud, loud in it. <laughs> that's it. You've got to get him on this cast one day. <laughs> <laughs> he he would never do this. He would never do this. He would just he would just swear, call everyone a cunt, and then just walk off and drop the mic. That would be the end of it. What the fuck am I doing? Would probably be after time. <laughs> would probably be after after conversation. Anyway, so overall, there were a little nitpicks, which obviously, as Jim rightly pointed out. I'm an MTV ADD, <laughs> no attention span <laughs> motherfucker. So clearly, I'm I'm not the, I'm not the target audience. <laughs> in, in fact, I think he basically called me a cunt. <laughs> I think it's safe to say. So what we're going to do is we're going <laughs> to I'll wrap it up by just saying that I I thought it was still a good film, still held up today. Harry Helsen's film effects, um, from everything from little miniature versions of. Jason to to the Hydra to the to the to the skeletons all still still hold up to date. They don't. I would say they're not as slick. I don't think you can put your hand on your heart and say that you'd rather see the Kraken from Clash of the Titans original and compare it against the remake and say that one was better than the other. Mm-hmm. Um, I just think I I think that would that's that's rose tinted specs talking. Do you would you agree with that, Jim? Um, well, it's one of the things with Harryhausen films. I mean, as I said, if you watch the Blu-ray version, it looks mm. a lot better than the DVD version. Mm. And although, in principle, I'm against with people tinkering with films, mm. I wouldn't object to releases of Harryhausen's films where they cleaned up the matting mm. in the slightest. Mm. I don't think that would be an insult to the man. I think that'd be a compliment to him, mm. um, because you know he he was work he was pioneering this shit, mm. you know. And um, one of the things, if you watch a lot of like stop motion animation films, like Harryhausen's, although mm. he made incredible efforts, there is you can spot the difference between the two sets of film between the live action and the stop motion mm. and i wouldn't object to someone going in and cleaning them cleaning them up to be honest yeah. i really i really wouldn't i i think that would that would complement the man's work rather than detracting from it yeah you I'm, know it's, it's not a lucas situation of revising the past in a stalinist fashion it, it's It'd be something that would highlight his genius mm. rather than detract from it. Well, actually, because that was the other thing <clears> that, <throat> that kind of sprang to mind as you were talking about you were talking about the color grading and everything. One thing mm. that springs to mind, and it's still, and I sort of think think back on it, I kind of realise what's going on. By the way, Dow, if you pick up the the iPad, there's the yes. More Jane Seymour. More Jane Seymour. No, <laughs> um, no, what I was going to say was one other thing that doesn't do his effects work justice is that 
don't forget that nowadays we're watching, if we're watching a film digitally, <laughs> don't look at it like that, you dirty old man. If, you, <laughs> if, if you're watching a film, if you're watching a film digitally, it's playing at, um, it's playing at round about thirty frames a second. Mm. Now, if you're watching on the UK TV, it's playing at twenty five. So already, when you've got vi- when you've got effects that were literally keyframed to 24 frames a second, when you play it on a normal TV, or even worse, when you play it on a computer screen, what you're doing is you're seeing the conversion. And so what you're seeing mm. is there are extra frames that Harryhausen didn't put in mm. because he was doing it to 24 frames. So I think watching something of Harryhausen's at the cinema would look smoother and more in keeping with the animation and what's going on on the screen and less jerky because definitely what, because definitely. what you're getting is you're mm. getting half frames and additional frames being digitally created or blended out and basically Harryhausen's movements were on the frame so he would do 24 frames to mm. move something a second whereas actually what you're watching is an extra frame for every second stuck in there at 25 frames yeah. and in and in the case you know in the case of 30 frames a second every every second is an extra six frames mm. which makes everything look a little bit more juddery um i, I th- think though if you want to see the um genius of harry housen at work mm. i mean even though i mean i don't think dvd does stop motion animation any favors mm. In the conversion, and especially not if you're watching it in um, a high def TV. Hmm. But if, if you want to get a benchmark hmm. of what a genius Harryhausen is, hmm. um, you watch Jason the Argonauts or any of his movies, and then you watch, um, say, Jack the Giant Killer or When Dinosaurs Moved the Earth, which are the hmm. same period, hmm. but done by his um, protege, Jim Danforth. Hmm you will see a distinct drop in quality in the effects. Hmm. Um, not just in the animation, but also in the creature design. Yes. Um, I mean, yeah. I, mean I, I love Jack the Giant Killer, hmm. but if you compare it, you can... You, you, on DVD, for example, hmm. you can see it's the work of the master... And the student, yes. very clear, very, very clearly. Mm. Yes. Ah, so there you go. I think um, we shall I think we shall move on to some feedback now because I think <laughs> I think basically I think we're all agreed that this film is still a classic, still holds up, and and even more so the effects and the the work behind it because mm. of just because of the year it was created. I mean, yeah. I mean, yeah. that's that's what that's a good point actually. Uh, as a final thought, mm. and I keep jumping in like a twat here. No, but, no, no, go right ahead. Um, You've done zero research for this. I mean, <laughs> I mean, I know there's 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 a whole natural debate debate which we've we've done well to avoid mm. to avoid going practical effects good, CGI bad. Yes, um, uh, and and that's a disservice to the many artists working who do sterling computer visual effects. Hmm. But I think the the key point is why Harryhausen's work is still magical is the fact it's the vision of one man. Hmm. Whereas now you get 20 guys working on an arm of a creature. Hmm. And it's because there's a division of labor. Hmm. You don't get that same complete whole vision of a character no. that Harryhausen can bring. Hmm. And I mean, you know, the th- one of the key things that when I watch Harryhausen movies is is it's it's not the magic and the effort that went into it. It's the fact that he storyboarded this these sequences to play out naturally. Whereas when you have CGI animation, the mistake that is made, and it's a director's mistake, mm. it is not the mistake of they the very hard working people doing wonderful effect sequences. Mm. Mm. The problem is they include camera angles and um shots 
that aren't natural to mm. the human eye. Yes. Whereas Harry Housen had that touch of he knew how to meld live action and stop monitoring animation in a way that was seamless. I mean, Dianimation wasn't an idle boast. It mm. wasn't just a marketing thing. No. It, it was an artistic endeavor mm. to, to meld animation and live action. And why CGI fails and why often people rail against it is because directors, not the animators, directors insist on giving us shots that immediately don't sell the effect mm. because they're shots that no human eye could see. Yes. This is why Michael Bay's Transformers fails horribly, despite having the advantage of shit. massively... I mean, aside from the script, just in terms of the effects, yeah. just in terms of the visuals, it fails because the, the, the camera's whirling around like, an, like a chimp on an epileptic fit. <laughs> <laughs> and that, isn't, it, that doesn't sell the effect. Mm. I mean, there's an old rule in special effects law that says that if you're going to have a character get an axe to the face, mm. you show a shot beforehand that shows a real axe hitting something real. Mm. And you have that, the real sound effect, that chunk. Yeah. And then when it hits the character, that previous sound effect of a real axe hitting real wood sells the effect of a rubber axe hitting a rubber face. Mm. Yeah. Now, in modern CGI, where it fails... And it, this, is, this is something we all know. It fails because it doesn't have weight. Yes. Uh, and it, it doesn't have weight so many times because they're throwing the camera around. So as, as Darren has said of Transformers, it looks like coat hangers rolling across the screen. Mm, yeah. Well, I mean, uh, that, I mean that, that was always my... I mean, I know we're going off on a bit of a tangent now. and We were, trying, we were avoiding the old <laughs> effects thing, but well done, Jim. We're into yeah. the fight now. Yeah, cheers for that, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean, it was always one of my biggest, um, my biggest criticisms with the original Lord of the Rings films because I wasn't a fan of those to start with, mm. that, that Jackson was more in love with what Weta could do rather than trying to tell a story at one point. I mean, there's a there's well, a, the, the perfect know. example of that is if you compare the Willis O'Brien Kong to mm. Jackson's Kong. Oh, for Christ's sake! We are never doing Jackson's Kong. I haven't got that many hours in the day to waste on that. We're, we're never thing. doing it at all. We probably will, we'll, but I I will be. Mm. Doing but Willis O'Brien, he sells you the threat of the Tyrannosaur fighting Kong mm. in Jackson's effect version. In Jackson's effort. Shall we say? Yes. He went mental. Yes. And we had a bungee jumping fight. Hmm. But I mean, the weight is lost. Yeah. I mean, the thing. Well, the... it was in Harryhausen. I mean, in the Talos sequence, what sells that as much as the animation is the sound effects. Yes. The creaks that you believe that's a bronze giant coming to life. Hmm. Yeah, absolutely. But the, the, what I was going to say was that it's all shot because it has to fit with the humans that are being green screened against it. So mm. it's always shot with a practical camera. That's the thing. Well, well in Jackson's Kong, he treated the humans as something that could be added in green screen. Exactly. Rather or, than something that could be woven together. Well, I mean and and it's always it's almost the same as what you know, my one of my all all time you know default arguments with um, the Star Wars prequels is that you know if you can, shit. well, apart from the fact that <laughs> shit, but the fact is, what I was going to say was, you know, people say stilted delivery of lines, but if you're actually matting two totally different takes together of two people, there's, there's, not there's a, there's a disconnect you can pick up on, isn't there? Yeah, it's and that's the thing. Yeah, the yeah. the brain physically picks up on these things, and we're so attuned to the to the almost the un, unspoken narrative and the unspoken visual narrative of cinema that you know cameras are here and you always you never mm. cut across a line when you're doing a conversation and all this kind of thing that when the camera starts doing that your brain immediately goes oh i'm sorry i'm not there and yeah, yeah. and you know and 
Harryhausen stuff worked within its limitations. It had to fit with the live action footage, not the other way round. You couldn't film, you know, Jason and his friends on the beach from a helicopter sixty five thousand feet up in the air just mm. so you could look down on Talus's head to make him look bigger. You couldn't do that. So your brain is immediately saying, well, hold on, this is, you know, if I saw Talos, I'd be staring up at his big bronze cock because, frankly, <laughs> I'd be on the Argo 150 feet below. And, you know, whereas, as going back to the Lord of the Rings, there's one sequence where the crows fly over, all, fly, fly over the fellowship. Then you have a lot of conversation and then you cut back to the crows and they go down <coughs> into... Where is it? Into not Mordor, Isengard. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And they go down into Isengard, and they go down through the caves, and you following them. You go down through the caves, through the mines, around the mines, up over a tree, round a tree, round a tower, up the tower, round the tower, down the tower, through the tower, under a bridge, up the tree, round a tree, round a bridge, round everything. Goes zooming, and one crow flies right up to Christopher Lee's eye, and he just goes. Excellent. Ah! <laughs> yeah, he just goes, yes, excellent, yeah. or something like that. And you're like, you've just had me fucking whizzing about like a lunatic on a string, fucking being bungee jumped out of a cannon, and, you know, just so you could zoom in on Christopher Lee and he could go excellent. That's ten minutes of my life I'm not getting back, and that fact wasn't even that fucking good. And that's the thing, you... You know, if you get a chance to study these things and you suddenly realise, you go, hold on, now I'm being played. You know, the effect is lost. And I don't know if it's if it's weight. People say weightless, and I, I kind of understand what that means, but I think part of the problem is I think, more I that think, your brain snaps out of it. it's perception. Yes, exactly. Rather than weight. Exactly. I, I, if we could nail this, perception. Mm. And, and having watched a lot of CGI effects, and some are seamless and mm. some are awful. Yeah. And and it is that thing of kind of when you're seeing something that you couldn't possibly see, the effect isn't sold, mm. and and that that's it in a nutshell, I think. Um, yeah. And that's what Ray Harrison, because I mean, to go back to his um, history, mm. <clears throat> he saw Kong, mm. and. As a kid, before he saw Kong, he'd been entranced by dinosaurs, as many children, as you know, as many of us were. And he was making models and mm. dioramas of dinosaurs. Mm. When he saw Kong, he wanted them to move. Mm. And he was, you know, lucky enough, he, he got a meeting with Willis O'Brien, mm. and Willis O'Brien said, enroll in fine art, learn your craft, learn mm. anatomy. Mm. Learn how to learn how to draw things. Learn how to compose things. That's what you're missing. Mm. And and why his effects are still so magical is because, I mean, take the Talos sequence. We see it mm. from the view of one of the Argonauts. Mm. Whereas now, if they were making it, the camera would be spinning round Talos like a twat. <laughs> Go, Look, he's really high. He's really high. He's really high. <laughs> Giving mm. a hell of a skeletal point of view. Mm. Uh, but the thing is, that immediately doesn't sell the effect because that isn't a point of view we can relate to. No, exactly. And, uh, you know, a good a good example of that, again, is um, Clash of the Titans. You know, mm. the, the, the actual... <laughs> um, the actual original, as as horrible as that was as a film, but the effects were... The, were the good point, you know, that when you see um, Perseus on his on his you know on Pegasus flying up mm-hmm. and around the, the the Kraken, it's all done from Andromeda's point of view. She's looking up, she's yeah. watching him yeah. fly over. Mm. Whereas in the case of <laughs> in the case of the you know the remake, you know, it's like we were everywhere but up the Kraken's ass. Yeah. Know? Well, really, we need to be up Gigi Banker's ass. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, anyway, shut up, VHS player. Shut up. <laughs> anyway, um, right. I think I, th- I I tell you what though. I think I think talking about visual effects and you know the benefits and drops of. I don't think we can do it enough justice in this. But I would love to do a special with, with you, Jim. So we could have a little rawr, practical versus CGI thing. Um, at some point in the future, because I tell you what, there's more, there's more behind it. I mean, you know, obviously you you are more of a 
advocate of that that side of things um of the practical side i think whereas i i'm kind of like it's a tool if it works use it doesn't matter if it's well, cgi or not well i i think yeah i think or I maybe think i'm misreading as, as, as i said it, it is down to perception yes um that to sell an effect you have to present the proper point of view mm. once you start flinging the camera around like an epileptic chimp on a spinner <laughs> you lose credibility. <laughs> Stick the camera in a that, tumble dryer. That, yeah, yeah, I mean that that is it in a sense. You know, that that's what Harry Housen proves so well. Mm. He always knew that as good as his effects were, mm. no one would ever believe mm. Talos or the Harpies or the Saber Tooth Tiger or Carly were real. Mm. Unless you shot them in a way that sold them to the audience. Mm. Uh, and that's his genius. Mm. You know, that is, that's his vision. And, and, you know, that's why his films, even now in these days of where his effects have been totally superseded, mm. why people will still be sitting down you know, young kids will be watching Harryhausen films and going, Christ, I want to do that. Mm. In a way that Michael Bay's Transformers, for his box of receipts, mm. they will never inspire that. No. Never, never, ever. No. That's like putting your face in a bucket of spare parts, to be honest. <laughs> but there you go. Right. Okay. Well, I think we, we better move on. Because uh, yes. because I, I we've had a we had a big harmonious tangents before giving yeah. to people <laughs> yeah because yeah, I don't want to go off on tangent or nothing uh, <laughs> <laughs> but um no I I think there's a there's a much bigger sort of subject to to discuss but we will have some feedback now and the first piece of feedback is from Darren uh, not from talk. Darren but no, it's not from who's Darren, it from. It's from Gareth Lloyd. Gareth Lloyd. A pair of glasses and a smile. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, so would you like me to start reading that one out? That would be lovely. Okay, so Gareth, Gareth writes, mm. Hello, Lee, Darren and Jim. And he Oy. actually did write Jim. I'm there not you throwing that in there. He actually did write it. <laughs> Recognition at last, Jim. It's only, <laughs> take, it's only taken five episodes in a row, but yeah, you're there. Finally here. <laughs> they, catch, they get there in the end, Jim. They get there in the end. Bless them. Their heart's <laughs> yeah. in the right place. Go on, carry on. <laughs> uh, so it was sad to hear the news of the passing of Ray Harryhausen. His films dominated my childhood, my favourite being First Men in the Moon. But Jason was oh, yes. always a close second. Yeah. Watching it now, well, technically it's brilliant. The animation is great, and as much as the skeletons are applauded, for me, the standout scene is the one where they reawaken Telos. Oh, yeah, brilliant. Mm. Brilliantly staged and played, and the sound effects really make for a chillingly effective monster. The acting is a bit variable. Todd Armstrong is a little fat... Uh, was that, is a little flat... <laughs> I was going to say little flat, but a little fat bloke. Um, <laughs> Todd Armstrong is a little flat, but looks the part. <laughs> <laughs> Nigel Green is a great as great as Hercules, um, and it always bothers me as a kid that he wasn't in it more. And I love anything with his uh, that is Lawrence Naismith. Was it that Lawrence that has Lawrence Naismith in? And a nice little cameo from Patrick Trout is always a good thing. Um, yeah, <laughs> Nigel Green. Uh, the only the thing I always think of when I I see him is um, what's his name Zulu. Oh God, because <laughs> he was in that as the Sergeant Major, wasn't he? <laughs> yes. That's true, yeah. yeah. So, God, um, Zulu, blimey. Yes, That's Zulu. Going back a bit. Bloody no. thousands of them. Yeah. Um, Don't shoot until you see the whites <laughs> of their eyes. They would have been all right. We have to do kept... that. And, and Zulu <laughs> Dawn as well. Would have been all right if they kept their eyes closed. <laughs> <But> anyway, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, what? No, that's a line. Don't shoot until you see the whites <laughs> of their eyes. Don't look at me like I'm some kind of fucking racist, you idiot. <laughs> Got hot tea here. I'm gonna throw it over you to protect my loyalty <laughs> and my 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 honour. Loyalty? What the fuck? Oh god, it's getting on now. Go on, just keep reading, keep reading. I'll just paper over the cracks. He <laughs> seems my uh, just staring is more effective than saying anything where he's concerned. Yeah, apparently, apparently, indeed. How to make him feel uncomfortable? Apparently, I have uh, race guilt. Uh, yeah, you clearly. Have, yeah. <laughs> Go on. Um, okay, so. uh 
Let's see. Uh, the costumes and sets are also very good and often get overlooked in these films. And the music has a nice bombastic touch that helps the film achieve its real epic feel. So all in all, a true classic that holds up pretty well against today's CGI extravaganzas. Thanks, chaps. Great show as always, Gareth. Thank you very much, thank, Gareth. Thank you, Gareth. Oh, uh, yeah, we'll pass that over. Right, Here we okay. go. Through the mess of wires there. Right, okay. The next piece of feedback is from Bob Halo Man Lamont. Ah, uh-huh. ah, Bob uh, Lamont. We don't know. We should... I, we should have a theme tune for all of them now. As, oh, as every should do, for we? regulars, we should start making theme tunes. <laughs> yeah, we got to well, give them cool signs. No, well, Halo Man's good. You know? Oh well, there we go. Should Halo the, Man should have the music from Ooh. Halo playing over the top of his feedback. Oh, <laughs> or Texas oh. Halo. What? Or Texas Halo? I prefer the theme to Halo, <laughs> mate. Oh, okay. Then. Fucking. I'm <laughs> stripper theme. <laughs> yeah, I don't. Want, I don't really fancy any Charlene's Pateri on me bloody podcast. Thanks all the same. Okay then, there you go. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> moving on. So he writes. Hey, uh, Bob writes. Dear Lee, Darren, and Jim. <gasps> he's, got it, he's written down. They've there. acknowledged you, Jim. Jim, you've They've arrived. You. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you have. You are now a part of the tribe. Nub, yep, 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 yep. Sorry. Anyway, moving on. Um. It's with a heavy heart we mourn the passing of a legend that is Ray Harryhausen. Actually, I think calling him a legend is actually the selling the man short. For if you haven't heard of Harryhausen, you have definitely seen one of his movies he did the special effects for, or at least one of the many tributes that the film that the filmmakers have made f- to him in the years following his last film. While it might seem a bit naff by today's, as Jim's... T- as Jim would put it, core blimey crikey vision standards. <laughs> we forget that back in the day, these were cutting edge effects. And not only did they bring the creatures of myth and past to life, um, and bring them to life, Harryhausen did. Some of the creatures that brought he brought to life were staggering with the amount of detail and mobility Harryhausen could get out of them. And when you appreciate the amount of time stop motion animation takes even today, it makes the work that Ray was doing back then all the more special and legendary. Jason and the Argonauts is widely regarded regarded as his opus, and the fact cannot be and that fact cannot be argued that Harry Hilson put his best work into the film. The Harpies, Hydra, and the stunning skeleton fight at the end of the movie are stuff of legend and appear in any reel that showcases Mr. Harry Hilson's work. Plus, it is one of the most famous of Greek myths, meaning it, that most of the people are familiar with it. However, I must say this, while I appreciate the work Mr. Harryhausen did on the film, and it is stunning, and it is his masterpiece, this is not actually my favourite film he has done. For me, the, the thing that lets this film down is the acting. It all seems just a bit wooden, as if the, with the possible exceptions of the blind beggar played by Patrick Troughton. I know, I know it's... I know it's how they did it back then, but I found it just like waiting for the next Harryhausen monster to appear. Which I agree with. I think a couple of the times you just feel like people are just plonked in front of the screen and said, read this line. <laughs> <laughs> Who am I? Doesn't matter. Read this line. Shut up. <laughs> Wear this beard and this funny bobble hat. Yep. Anyway. Um... Anyway, he continues. My favourite Harryhausen monster, uh, sorry, my favourite Harryhausen film is actually Sinbad and the Eye of the Tiger. Now, I've got to say this, by the way. Every time you guys have been talking about Eye of the Tiger, all that happens is in the back of my mind is Survivor. <laughs> <laughs> it's the <laughs> Eye of the Tiger. It's the, sorry, yeah, anyway. but, but that was later. I mean, let's be honest. Let, let's get real here. Survivor. <laughs> I'm talking to you now. Summoning demon ghouls of hell, fighting a giant wasp, Jane Seymour wearing nothing but her hair. That's the real eye of the tiger, not some slurring Italian American going, and getting some punch from Mr. T. Fuck you, fuck you forever. (laughs) Oh, God. (laughs) He's not getting so much out of his tree, he's more of jumping down, getting in a camper van. Make sure it's all packed for a nice weekend away down by the coast. <laughs> down by Rage Coast. Um, uh, how long how long does it take to get to Darlington from here, Darren? I'm just, just wondering how long I've long got to Long enough. <laughs> get out of the way. Get out of the way. Survivor 
It's a mere eye blink away. <laughs> we, can, we can make it from here to the bunker before he turns up. It is no mistake that the robot's Terminator at the end of that classic film is inspired by the skeletons of Ray Harryhausen. <laughs> I will not stop. I will hunt you down. I wish We've you got no Jim's mistake. theme tune now. Jim, 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 Jim. Oh, moon, 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 moon. That sounds like that sounds like one of those films that I was trying to put into the video play that was waking my dad up at midnight. <laughs> but anyway, moving on. So anyway. Bob continued. Back to Bob. Back to Bob. While I appreciate that the acting in in that is oh Eye of the Tiger is less than stellar, and it's the and and that f- the film is quite possibly the weakest out of the whole trilogy, which again I love. It holds a special place in my heart as it was one of the first Harry Harryhausen films I ever saw. It has nothing to do with the hints of side boob you get from Jane Seymour and Taron Power. <laughs> Listen, it was the nineties. Boobs weren't as easy to see back then. Okay. <laughs> But in all seriousness, it's a sad day that Mr. Harryhausen has left us. He was truly a master of his craft, and I would say the grandfather of all special effects. The fact that even after many years out of the business, he and his works are still to this day held in such high regard, and in some cases almost fanboyish, by people both in Hollywood and around the world, just goes to show you how great this man actually was. Godspeed, Mr. Harryhausen. Bob Lamont. There you go. Cheers, Bob. Thank you very much for that, Bob. Lovely bit of feedback there. And uh, we've got one more piece of written feedback on our side, but have you got one, Jim? I have indeed. You do? Okay. Who and who's that from, Jim? And that's from the auto puncher himself, Mr. Jack P. Starro. <laughs> the damp knight. <laughs> <laughs> And I apologise now for any fuck ups in reading because I've had several brandies. I was going to say, but... <laughs> I was going to say, you, you, you definitely, you definitely have the angry brandy man <laughs> vibe going, going with that eye of the tiger bit, mate. I'm coming for you, survivor. I'm coming for you. <laughs> yeah, I don't know where you are. I don't know where you live, but I will find you and I will kill you. But it's weird. I mean, how could they come up with the title? I of the, the tiger without Re Harry Housen. Exactly. They mm. couldn't. Uh, hey, yes. I, and I'm going to fist fuck them all to next Tuesday. For that. <laughs> God almighty. <laughs> wow. <laughs> a, a, 80s tribute bands, beware. <laughs> Nothing can compare to a librarian scorned. <laughs> Anyhow, Jack mm. writes, mm. <laughs> Dear on. sailors of the black ship Doggo. <laughs> nice. This film perhaps is the perfect example of putting on rose tested. Rose testes? Rose smelling testes. <laughs> More brandy. <laughs> Jim, this is going to be a longer pod- this is going to be a longer feedback than the other one, but it's only going to be le- like twelve lines, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, and that's purely down to me being pissed. <laughs> you got, <Right. laughs> got twenty seven minutes to beat. Go. <laughs> this film is perhaps the perfect example of putting rose tinted specs to the test for me, since it's a film I remember from enjoying the hell out of in childhood, but not one I have watched since. So it doesn't have that ingrained familiarity of one of my oft-visited childhood favourites, like Ghostbusters, the original animated Transformers films, or the Jabba's Palace scene of Return of the Jedi. And while I've seen Clash of the Titans again within the last decade, and more recently seen some of Harryhausen's special effects for the first time well since, Jason and the Argonauts. Well, Sorry, that film Jim. remains for me refixed in my childhood. So has it stood the test of time? A classic evermore? Too bloody right it has. This shit, as to say as the kids say today, <laughs> is off the freaking chain. 
I am frankly amazed of how well this holds up. And although I can certainly discount some of the nostalgic influence, this film is, as I say, just enough in memory that I'm not getting some kind of squee reaction from things that I've either forgotten or seen loads of times before. Or am I rediscovering? Or am I rediscovering <laughs> some completely long-forgotten classic about this? No, this was more like watching it again for the first time. Except not, as it's more marvelous. I'm pretty well, well into Greek and Chinese mythology, and this is very much how I remember pitching it with robust bearded heroes and gorgeous women who are pretty often formidable too. Wikipedia link to Honor Blackman. <laughs> Crumbling ruins, smoke, togas, and giant fucking great fantastic monsters that can and will kill the living shit out of any of the supporting cast. <laughs> Does anyone miss the violence in what was ostensibly kids' movies? It's funny because while I be because while I abhor excessive violence in the superhero genre, I really dug it in sword and sandal pics. And still do. No hyper gory over the stop stuff here. Just the ever present threat of mortality. And while other great bastions of supposed kiddie fare that was Doctor Who, these movies have quite the death rate. And it should be. And speaking of Doctor Who, I totally didn't recognise Patrick Troughton this time round. Weird. Hmm. And I shan't go on about at length about the amazing work of Harry Housen, as I've always done a, sp as I've always done a spray over how great he was in Monster Monsieur's Les Bobs de Mesmeur. But suffice to say, <laughs> Hypno Bobs, for those who don't speak French. Ah, oh, very good. Oh, uh, right. But suffice to say, it was that the man was a master of both design and technique, in perfect harmony. Even watching it now, I'm hard-pressed to fault the effects. I mean, okay, the harpies don't look quite as good as everything else for some reason, but I don't care. That Hydra is wicked, and Talos the Colossus looks so fucking real, it's not even fucking funny. I'm particularly impressed by the matting work. Even watching the, big, even watching the DVD on a big telly, I can hardly see the divides. Maybe, 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 <laughs> maybe, maybe, <laughs> maybe. <just> that. <laughs> maybe if this were remastered on Blu-ray, it wouldn't have the horrible experience you describe sometimes with the Star Wars Blu-rays exploding on the fours. Exposing. <laughs> <laughs> don't don't worry. The, don't worry. They're coming with the stomach pump, Jim. <laughs> keep, talk, keep talking, man. <laughs> <sighs> only only several more paragraphs to go. Here you go. Go on, go on, but, do it. Almost there. <laughs> but if I don't want so to see it that way, I would argue that even it was meant to be seen in that resolution. Or not. No. I think that's giving them too much credit. I do love how the Greek gods are portrayed here, even though Hercules doesn't seem like Lou Ferrigno. But he's a downside better actor. <laughs> the nice. script is a tight, fat-free rendition of the classic myth that never drags or feel excessively dated. I fucking love these films. I'm so glad you lads prompted me to revisit it, and I will defend it to the last of my otter-bloodied fists. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and did I mention the skeletons? Oh. As someone whom Skeletor <laughs> remains to this day is my favourite villain of all fiction, that skeleton army was pure gold to me as a kid, and looking back now, I can't genuinely believe how thrilling it was and how fucking good that baton still looks. 
Later, gents, and thanks again. Cheers, Jack. Peace, Darrow. The Damp Knight. The <laughs> Otter Puncher. <laughs> Thank you very much for that, Jim. Masterful, yes, geez, masterful reading. <laughs> 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 or not? No, sorry. I was just. It was just. Um, you, you you slurred a couple of words, and as you did, da- Dar- Darren was ah, looking. At, Darren was looking. At, <laughs> Darren was just looking at me as if he was falling off a chair. So if you heard a sort of slight squeak, I wasn't really laughing at you. I was laughing at Darren doing you falling out of your chair. I thought to myself, any minute we're going to hear this massive thump. <laughs> Uh, That's it. He's gone. Uh, yeah. So anyway, no, thank you. <laughs> it was still giant fucking bronze statue. His <laughs> uh, head turned into a gorgonzola. Um, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> we got one last piece of written feedback, and then we got one MP3 feedback. So Darren, who okay. is the MP3 from? The MP3. MP th- no the not the MP3 one the, the, the bloody written one I'm not uh, even drunk I'm just on tea it's uh it's from it's from our, our friendly friendly friend uh, yeah. Mr Martin Thompson ah oh, Mr Martin hey. Thompson yes um and Martin writes did oh hello Lee Darren and Jim See? again <laughs> excellent okay mm. um despite this this being a classic film I've never watched it before. Um, I'm not. I'm not really one of those questing. Uh, was I'm not really one of. Well, oh, I'm not really one for the questing of films and this. Uh, although enjoyable in places, left me a bit meh. I can see why this was popular back in the day, though. It, um, and it does have some good scenes. Uh, we are here to praise Ray Harryhausen, though, and he does a really good job here. My favourite scene is probably the statue of Talos attacking. It, just like a lot of people, really. That one, I think. <laughs> um, Something the jerk, uh, something the jerky style of animation enhances. If it was stabbed in the heel, what's that? If it was if it was stabbed in the heel, though, why it doesn't clutch its? Uh, why does it? Oh, if it was stabbed in the heel, why does it clutch its throat? <laughs> Who keeps bringing Patrick Troughton those marvelous feasts to? The harpies weren't that good at, at but the famous skeleton sequence still stands up, and you really can, and you can really see the actors like many after them, slashing vaguely in the air with the promise that the monster will be animated in later. The film ends rather abruptly after they've stolen the grim-looking fleece. Was there a sequel to this? Perhaps it's just because we did Iron Man 3 last week, but this put me in mind of the Marvel movies, especially Hercules, buggering off halfway through, perhaps on his own adventures. Jason looks like Jack Whitehall. The beards (laughs) all look stuck on and... That figure that is really, really creepy. Looks like it may be the bunker of shun for me this week, then. Not a bad film for what it was, though, but I guess it wasn't my thing. Cheers, Martin. Thank Cheers, you very Martin. Much, Martin. Yeah, well, you know. Sorry. There you go. Yeah. Other opinions are available, as yes. I said before. In 12 inch, 7 inch, and CD single. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right, okay, well. The last piece of feedback is from uh, another um, one of another um, Antipodean from Down Under. Oh, yes, um, Jason Patrick, not the actor, <laughs> as he's always a great. It person. is really, <laughs> yeah. Actually, it is. It's Jason Patrick, the actor. Yeah. No, um, Jason Patrick, who um, we know, uh, Darren and I knew him from various forums as bizarrely Captain Argo. Indeed. And Jason um, also has um, a blog, and um, it's called Music Dork and His Wife. Uh, he's um, yeah, he was he's he is still into the music. He did a oh, live he so. did a live internet radio station for a while, a uh, mm-hmm. show for a while. Um, you can find his music blog. Um, or it's just his blog where he has old podcasts, mixtape projects, and joint album projects. You can find that at musicdorkwife2.wordpress.com. And he also has a photography blog, which is The Art of Music Dork, which you can find at Jace P. Art. Uh, Jace Pat Art, sorry. So that's J A S E P A T Art.wordpress.com. So, anyway, yes. 
Let's uh, hear what uh, Jason has to say and uh, see whether or not uh, Jason and the Argonauts still holds up to him today. For him today, rather. <laughs> Smooth link. <laughs> Hello, Lee. Hello, Darren. It's Jason here. Jason Patrick, otherwise known as Captain Argo. And uh, before I go on to uh, feedback about the film, Jason and the Argonauts, uh, long time, no feedback, and I remember... I think sending you guys in occasional feedback when you first were first starting out, and look at you now. You've got so many more people uh, bringing feedback in, and it's all good. And uh, you've uh, you've come a long way, production wise, and uh, you know material wise as well. I think uh, I think you guys are doing a great job. I don't always get to listen to every single one. I tend to listen to the ones uh, where I have already seen the film. Uh, and skip over the uh, the ones that I haven't haven't seen or have no interest in seeing. Um, but that's that's me. I've um, a bit. Uh, I guess I've become a bit saturated with podcasts over the years, <laughs> having done uh, some of my own uh, a few years back and uh, and all that sort of thing. But I must say, uh, something I've been meaning to tell Darren, and I don't know if he'll remember this, but. Um, he rang me on Skype once uh, a few years ago, and uh, I think he was waiting for Laura or something. They were going out, and uh, they were off to the Foo Fighters concert at Hyde Park. And I didn't think any more of it until uh, a couple of years later when I saw the DVD of the Foo Fighters in Hyde Park. And I, I'm a bit envious of Darren because I would have loved to have been uh, been in the the uh, the audience or the, in the crowd to uh, see. Uh, Roger Taylor and Brian May from Queen get up with the Foo Fighters and do the uh, the cover version of uh, Queen's uh, Tie Your Mother Down with uh, Taylor Hawkins, the drummer from Foo Fighters, singing on vocals. That uh, that would have been a very special moment to have seen, uh, especially if you're a Foo Fighters fan, which I sort of am. But uh, anyway. Now, the getting on to the, the movie... Jason and the Argonauts. It's a favourite of mine, uh, I guess, because of the uh, the namesake, and uh, it's, it is where I got the name Captain Argo uh, as a screen name on uh, message boards and forums that I've posted on over the years, and sort of know you guys through. And uh, um, it's a movie that uh, I've, oh, has always been very special uh, to me. It um, it's uh it takes you into a uh, you know a, a world of greek mythology that like no other film can the wonder of that is the uh, the special effects by uh ray harryhausen who uh, who did pass away recently hence why you're doing the uh doing this special and uh just some of the pioneer pioneering techniques that uh that he developed for this film and you know have gone on to be used in other films in the uh the the years following is just incredible but uh, a couple of the the effects highlights for me uh would be one where uh Jason's in the water and the ship's gotten destroyed and the uh, the head of the goddess is laying in the water and it uh, it opens its eyes and looks over at Jason and starts talking you don't see the lips move or anything but just that that eye movement that uh, that really spooked me as a as a child i just thought that was incredible um you know it's a really really simple animatronic effect nowadays or well, they probably don't even use animatronic effects uh in films you know it's all cg nowadays isn't it um you know just uh things like that and the the uh the stop motion of the uh the minotaur uh that uh that that whole uh battle and uh that uh just uh you know something you don't see in films and sure it's 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 a bit jerky and um you know you, you know it's fake but it's 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 a fantasy film you you know you can't help but uh put your brain in park and uh you know take go go with it and you know just enjoy it i guess so uh Oh, and the skeleton battle at the uh, towards the end, of course that uh, that that's uh, that's incredible in itself. Um, so uh, yeah, but uh, some of the, some of the dialogue is uh, is a bit clunky. But uh, you know, when was it made? It was made in nineteen seventy. So no, nineteen seventy eight. 
1963. I thought it was 1973. I was wrong. 1963. So it's a, a oh gee, knowing that now, it uh, it's uh, even more of a landmark film as far as the special effects go. Uh, and all that sort of thing. But uh, uh, it's a film I enjoyed very much as a child, and I think uh, some of the magic of that, uh, the uh, that uh, is in that world in that uh, that film is still still there today. And it was uh, it was wonderful to revisit that. So uh, thank you guys for the opportunity, and uh, thanks for taking the time to play this feedback. I'll uh, hopefully catch you guys another time. See ya. Thank you very much for that, Jason. Yeah, cheers, Jason. Um, thanks for that feedback, and we will always play it if you send it in, sir. And uh, thank you for remembering my memories for me, because I completely <laughs> forgot about that Hyde Park concert. I'm getting old. <laughs> so, but, but, but that was years yeah. ago. Christ. But, you know, obviously he's chronicling our life from a distance, because, you, so. you know, he was here at the start of the Black Dog. He certainly was, yes. He was, when we were back on Mevio. Wow. God. One how, of the granddaddies. Yeah, how long it's taken... How long is you know, not taking? I was going to say, how long ago was it? Fucking three years now. Hey, four years. Uh, fucking years. Yeah, one hundred and fifty-six episodes ago. Anyway, yeah, we're, we're in our fourth year now. Yes, yes, we are. Yeah, it'll be fifth. It will be in our fifth year in September. Uh, yes, we will. Fucking five hell years. Fire. We're gonna have to do something big, I think. What? Yeah, you know, for the uh, the fifth the fifth year, sort of. You know, the fifth birthday. Uh, yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Let me panic about that after I've got out my visual <laughs> effects calls and spent me 14 and a half grand <laughs> anyway so thank you very much for that Jason thank you for the feedback glad you liked the film still um, yeah the whole thing with um, was it the, the the mechanical head in the um, water I have to say it reminded me of one thing What's um, do you remember <clears throat> a film with Anthony Hopkins called Magic yes and it had a, the creepiest trailer Ever, yeah, which just was that dummy's head, fucking going, dummy. Magic talking. is great. Magic is fun. Magic is fun for everyone. And then it yeah. closes its eyes, and then it just goes. Uh, yeah, and it opens again. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, well, yeah. Anyway, so it, it reminded me of that. I don't know why it's a complete tangent, but you know we're trying to stay off the tangents, as you can tell by this two-hour forty-six-minute podcast. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, thank you very much for that, Jason. And uh, yeah, send in any more feedback if you like anything we're doing um we'll always play it sir we're always welcome right well that's that i think we will best wrap it up now since we are touching two minutes 46 a uh, two hours 46 rather wow so um well i think we'll leave it there so i think it just leaves me to um thank everyone for listening um jim would you like to um Slur out your <laughs> slur out your links <laughs> through through your um your brandy your brandy miasma over there, sir. <laughs> yeah, certainly you can hear me every week or thereabouts <laughs> on Hebrews <laughs> in uh, on the iTunes or Alcno other Bob's. places as well. <laughs> <coughs> oh, sorry, <coughs> oh, God. That famous podcast, Bob No Hips. Yeah. Bob No Hips. Yeah. Hypni, hypni Bibbles. Um, anyway, sorry. Go on, carry on, Jim. Yes, available on iTunes or at hypnogorgods.com or at iTunes or Geekland Online or other things I've already repeated. <laughs> <laughs> brilliant, brilliant. Um, yes. And um, if anyone has any feedback in for, uh, I won't say for tomorrow because we're we're recording the Star Trek Into Darkness thing tomorrow, so it's a bit pointless saying about that. If anyone has any feedback for the following film, which is the oft put off <laughs> Catwoman, uh, um, then God please... have mercy on yourself. It's yeah. a cursed film, sir. It is a cursed film, and I, I, I you know what. I, I am always looking forward to the level of inebriation Jim Jim will fall into by the time we hit the end of that cast. <laughs> um, three times. Three times. God damn it, I'm watching this for your pleasure. Exactly. Damn it. Dance for us, monkey boy. Dance. <laughs> dance, Colin, dance. Um, so, yes, you'll, you'll be joining us for that, Jim, I trust? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, why do I agree to these things? Honestly. Well, you know... Well, 
Don't worry, don't worry. After that, after that, we'll we'll let you go free into the wild. Yeah. You'll be free for a while, sir. <laughs> Just five minutes of feedback at the end of every cast. That's all we ask. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, yeah. So we'll be doing Star Trek Into Darkness as our next uh, special episode, which will be a special. Um, we will be doing Catwoman next Tuesday. Um, so send your feedback into Black Dog at Geek Planet Online. Dot com. Alternatively, um, leave and, your... and no fucking sneaky reminding of memories. You have to rewatch it like we have to. <laughs> yes, you have. Let, to... Let's make that fucking clear now. Yes, if I'm suffering it. You cunts have to as well. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> oh, Jim's gone into angry dad at a wedding <laughs> <laughs> mode. Anyway, yes, absolutely. There's only so many fucking holes. Pornography's. <laughs> <laughs> Oh dear! <laughs> right. Okay. So yes, Angry Jim has decreed that you cannot work around this. You cannot give it. Uh, hey, I remember seeing Catwoman back in the seventies or something. Hey, I like was that. sat on a table twenty foot away from the trailer that was being played on someone else's device. Does that count? Yes. No. no. If you're going to take part next week, yeah, you're going to have to actually watch it. it. Yeah. Don't send us any feedback saying, "Oh, I didn't feel like watching it." Yeah. We're putting ourselves through this. If we're going to do it, then that's fine. Yeah. If you all going to do it, then you're going to do it. <laughs> Motherfuckers. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> this is the angry end of the podcast. Um, <laughs> and um, yes, if you don't, that's fine. You know, by all means, take a week off. Don't have to send feedback in. But if you do, we don't want any of this. Hey, I just saw this the other day. Um, in my mind. Um, anyway. Oh, God, I think we really have. I think it, this is turning into Harmon Town, isn't it? I it don't is. know how to end it. I, I don't want to get on a lot of tangents here. But however... Yeah. Aren't they supposed to end it? Aren't we supposed to end it on a rap if it's Harmon Town or something? Your well, mother, you, your brother. Yeah. Your sister and your lover. <laughs> I fucked her in the north. I fucked her in the south. I fucked her in the ear and I fucked her in the mouth. Uh, <laughs> Jason... Jason, Jason and the Argonauts. Da, 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 da. Looking for adventure, looking for bronze men to lend a hand. Do, 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 do. Hercules, down, down, Hercules, down, down. They left him far behind. Da, da, da. Looking for a flat man under a big bronze statue. Of <laughs> Oh. Jim's on booze and all the yard goes to <laughs> sailing off. <of> a... <laughs> oh dear! Anyway, right, that's it. We really have to go now. Tiredness and alcohol abuse really do not mix. Anyway, <laughs> not you, Jim. <laughs> Never you, Jim. Never you, Jim. Right. No. No. Right. So um, we'll see you all next week for Catwoman. Or failing that, we'll see you in the next day or so for Star Trek into... And if you miss Catwoman, I entirely understand. <laughs> <laughs> right. We're, we're definitely going now. We're definitely going. You hang up. No, you hang up first. No, you hang up first. There's only so many you can knock out to that baseball but baseball scene, isn't there? <laughs> but anyhow. <laughs> <laughs> I just got a... A, another vision into your life there Jim another into your viewing <laughs> habits <laughs> but I agree I absolutely agree um, right see you later say goodbye everyone goodbye everyone goodbye everyone <laughs> there's a voice that keeps on calling me down the road it's where I'll always be every stop I make I make a new friend Stay for long, just turn around and I'm gone again Maybe tomorrow I want to settle down Until tomorrow I'll just keep moving on Get out of the booth, Jack No, I like it in here Oh, hold on, hold on We're just pausing because Darren needs to go to the loo